Um, good morning. The Prince George's County Planning Board is now in session. Um, I'm going to, to say Happy New Year, Happy New Decade to everyone. We will start um, with our development and review items at about 10 o'clock, but we have a parks and recreation item this morning. Um, so, um, pursuant to the general provisions of the article of the general provisions article of the Annotated Code of Maryland, specifically Section 3-305B3 and B7, we need a motion to go into closed session for purposes of um, to consider acquisition of real property in College Park or matters directly related thereto, and to consult with counsel. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed. The ayes have it. Thank you. Okay, good morning, the Prince George's. Um, we need a motion to come out of closed session. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor, indicate by saying aye. Aye. Um, we are back in open session. We need a motion to ratify the action taken in closed session. So moved. Second. Um, we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, the ayes have it. Um, so, good morning, everyone. Happy New Year, happy new decade. Um, we have a number of announcements that I'm going to start off with. As always, we start with a moment of silence for those who have passed on in the intervening um, um, weeks in this particular case. So, we're, we, ha we have employees who've lost family members, and we're going to start there. We're going to um, ask that we keep these pe folks in our thoughts. Um, Willie Radcliffe um, um, passed away. He was the father of James Radcliffe and the grandfather of James Radcliffe <coughs> Jr., both of whom work at the Department of Parks and Recreation. Jacqueline Yvette Chandler is the mother of Tia Patterson, who works in the Department of Parks and Recreation. Um, Henry Zhang lost his mother. Henry Zhang is a master planner in the Development Review Division oh, wow. of the Planning Department. Um, also, Terry Johnson, who is the budget manager for the planning department, lost his father, and we want to remember all of these folks in our, in our thoughts. Um, we also lost in the intervening weeks Senator Ulysses Curry, who was age 82. He was the former senator and delegate who represented uh, the District 25 in the Maryland General Assembly. He served more than 30 years as a Maryland state lawmaker was appointed majority whip in the House of Delegates and chair of the Senate's Budget and Taxation Committee. So we want to remember him and his uh, family. His, uh, I know his viewing, not viewing, but his memorial services uh, tomorrow and then the, the actual funeral is on Saturday. We want to remember the victims of the plane crash in Lanham on Sunday, December 29th. Dr. Joe Hairston, age 71, public school educator, administrator in Baltimore County's first African-American superintendent who began his career as an educator in Prince George's County in 1969. Yeah, what was that, Suitland High? Oh, he was the principal at Suitland High, okay, yes. And he in instituted many um, reforms at Suitland High, too, and received recognition from the White House and the National Award of Excellence. Michael Daniel Jackley, Jackley, age 77, the founder and business law and tax department of Joseph Greenwald and Lake, um, the law firm in Greenbelt. Um, he was a partner at the firm for 32 years, and he joined, um, he attended University of Maryland School of Law at night while working full time as a financial analyst at the IRS. The victims of the Australian wildfires, there's so many, and, and um, human beings and animals there. Uh, this one, Herman Boone. Herman Boone, at age 84, was the former high school football coach at T.C. Williams High School in Alexandria, was prominently featured and given more um, uh, recognition in the movie Remember the Titans. But there are many people who lived here and who knew about um, the Titans and the, their unprecedented winning team during their first year of desegregation. And he, okay, go ahead, put, go on the mic, go ahead. A graduate of North Carolina Central, and somebody else is a graduate of North Carolina Central. Ab absolutely, absolutely. Um, he was portrayed by uh, actor Denzel Washington in the film, but it became, the school became the focus of protests and riots following the Supreme Court ruling in Brown versus Board of Education, which required the uh, integration. Ironically, within one year, not only did Herman Boone die, but um, assistant coach Yost died in 2019. 
a team captain Julius Campbell died in 2019, and Petey Jones um, died in 2019. Mm -hmm. All of them were prominent, prominent um, persons in, in, in uh, um, as part of that team. Um, it was just, it just seems ironic. Um, William Hatcher, age 86, the nation's, one of the nation's first black mayors of a major city. He was elected mayor of Gary, Indiana in 1967 and served five terms. J. Charles Jones, civil rights leader, 1960, while he was a student at Johnson C. Smith University, he staged multiple lunch counter sit-in sit protests in downtown Charlotte, North Carolina. He was jailed for his support of the Rock Hill Nine, um, co-founder of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, otherwise known as SNCC, and was member of the Freedom Riders. We want to remember the victims of the shooting at West Freeway Church in Christ, Church of Christ in Texas. Um, David Stern, um, the former commissioner of the NBA for three decades. Uh, Leland Mendelson, age 86, he was the TV producer and executive producer of more than 40 animated peanut specials, including A Charlie Brown Christmas. Uh, Jack Sheldon, acclaimed jazz musician and trumpeter. Um, uh, Ali uh, Willis, a Grammy Award winning songwriter who composed Boogie Wonderland in September for Earth, Wind and Fire. Uh, Sam, Samuel Wish, professional football player and coach, played for the Washington Redskins and head coach for the Cincinnati Bengals, led the team to a Super Bowl. Edward Ashoff, age 34, ESPN reporter, first diagnosed with pneumonia, but then treatment failed. Um, victims of the plane crash in Louisiana. Michael Fitzpatrick, age 56, former, former congressman representing Bucks County, um, Pennsylvania for four terms. Fred Rooney, former congressman from Lehigh Valley area, Pennsylvania. Fred Graham, a one-time lawyer who pursued a career in legal journalism, covered the Supreme Court in sensational trials, including Watergate. He, did, he covered them for the New York Times, CBS News, and Court TV. Neil Pierce, author and syndicated columnist with the Washington Post. And we also want to remember um, the, the five victims of the stabbing at the Hanukkah celebration at Rabbi's mm -hmm. home in Monsey, New York on, on December 28th. We want to keep in our thoughts also Congressman John Lewis, who's been diagnosed with stage four pancreatic cancer. He was a champion for civil rights and did so much for us in Prince George's County. The members of the US military who have been deployed into the Middle East following our most recent incident. The residents of Puerto Rico who have uh, suffered mm -hmm. um, consecutive earthquakes. And um, some have, uh, we have some that have died already and some uh, 300,000 citizens without water service. My cousin there told me this morning her water has been restored. Um, and the, the victims of the Iran, um, Iran plane crash on, on um, January 7th as well. Now, we were out for the uh, recess from December through now, so that's a lot of people, um, way more than normal. But um, thank you for bearing with us because we do want to remember these folks and their families. It's always painful when we have a loss. And to any of you who may have suffered a loss in your family, our hearts and sympathy is extended to you as well. If we can now have our moment of silence, it would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Again, we say Happy New Year, Happy New Decade. It is the month of January 2020. Um, I like to look at that as um, clear vision, 2020. So this is how we're going to pursue this year. This is how we're going to pursue this decade. And in the month of January, it is Financial Wellness Month. Mm. <laughs> After the holidays, I don't know about that. Get Organized Month, good idea. Get a Balanced Life Month, good luck with that. National um, Sunday Supper Month, we should get back to that. It is Oatmeal Month, okay, maybe yes, maybe no. National Soup Month makes <laughs> sense. This, um, January 9th is Law Enforcement Appreciation Day. We want to remember our officers. Yes, we have some officers who are problems, uh, but not all. The bulk of the officers in this country and in, and in this state and in this county and also in with our park police are very, very good officers who go and protect us day in and day out by putting their lives in danger. So we want to remember the, uh, all of those involved in law enforcement. Um, on January 9th, 13 years ago, on January 9th, 07, Steve Jobs unveiled the very first iPhone. Mm -hmm. January 9th, 1788, Connecticut became the fifth state. 1951 was the official op opening of the United Nations. 1866, um, January 9th, this university opened in Nashville, Tennessee. 1941, 6,000 
um, Jews were exterminated in, in Bucharest, um, Romania. And we, want, we never want to forget those kind of travesties. I want to take this time to say happy birthday to our technical hearing writer, uh, Marie Proctor, and also to our planning board administrator, Jessica Jones, over there. So we want to say happy birthday happy to them. Birthday. Um, I also <laughs> want to welcome back our commissioner, Will, Will Dorner. Will Dorner has been out for a little while. He had a new addition to his family, Marianne, uh, his baby girl, his first baby girl, who joins Big Brother, his, joins his wife and Big Brother Enrique. And um, she's had a host of challenges, really very serious challenges, and I have permission to say this, but she is a fighter, mm -hmm. and, she, uh, and, she, and, and he has appreciated all the support and love and prayers that have come his way um, from everyone. And we are so glad that Marianne is still going strong, still fighting, and if you wanted to say anything. Um, yeah, so I think, I wanna thank the commission and the family for all the support and for all the wishes and everything. For those of you who don't know, um, like, the chairwoman has said, we, we've been going through just a bunch of challenges, some anticipated, some not. Um, it's part of life, it's part of what you kind of are dealt and you have to go forward and have faith and, and kind of keep going day by day. Um, we've been in the ICU for about two months now um, at Children's and we're hoping that we'll be out maybe in the next month or so. It, it's sort of a challenge every day that we go by. We're, we're blessed to have a very good health care system here in the United States. Um, some of the things that she's been going or, or had challenges with, she would have passed away within the first week or two of life. So mm -hmm. thankfully we have good health care here. We have access to it. Um, we have good support from fam family, friends, uh, coworkers, and everyone else in the community. And I think we're going to be taking advantage of a lot of the, uh, the services that the commission supports and provides here in the county. I look forward to sort of seeing a different aspect of life that I hadn't anticipated on getting into, but that we do provide um, for other kids in the county and, and trying to help out and, and improve those as well as she grows up and gives us a lot of uh, issues and challenges beyond that our normal kids uh, will do. So yeah, thank you. And, and if you can keep us in, in your prayers and thoughts, then that would be much appreciated as well. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for bringing others um, into uh, being open enough to share mm -hmm. um, your challenges with others because we don't know the challenges that all of you may be going through as well. And sometimes it helps to know um, you're to, that you're not alone. That's right. exactly right. Um, finally, as you can see, we have Census 2020 um, depicted on the screen above you. It is very important. We are pursuing Census 2020 in earnest now. Um, Prince George's County had a severe undercount in, in 2010, and that resulted in a loss of um, $18,250 per person over the 10-year period, which, which ended up being millions upon millions of dollars. I think it was like $363 million that Prince George's County lost that could have benefited us in terms of services. It is imperative that everyone here who is a resident of Prince George's County Complete the census form. Tell everybody you know, Lottie, Daddy, and everybody. We are having a, the county executive um, and I and uh, the complete count committee, which I chair for, for census, um, will be hosting a workshop this evening at the New Carrollton Library. It is almost at capacity. I think it's over capacity right now. But that is why I'm wearing our proud to be counted shirt. That is why this will be depicted April 1st is census day. Um, <laughs> okay, you'll get your shirt. Okay. <laughs> um, so that is why it's imperative that everyone get counted because that money will benefit so many programs and inure to the benefit of the residents of Prince George's County. Lastly, we have a brand new part of our team, a brand new part of our legal team to be specific. And I am going to turn it over, where, there she is, to our new <laughs> Deputy General Counsel to make the introduction of David Warner. Um, I did that before. Thank you, Madam yeah, thank Chair. You. Uh, Deborah Borden, Debbie, Deputy General Counsel. Um, we are here very happy to welcome uh, the newest member of our team, David Warner. He's sitting next to me. David is an accomplished land use attorney. He has practiced in several states, including California, Illinois, and Wisconsin. 
Um, we were joking that he must have set a record because he is a member of the bar of five different states, and that for our office is probably a record. Uh, David completed his undergraduate degree at Chicago's Northwestern University. He's also earned a master's degree in history from the University of Maryland, Baltimore County, and his law degree at the University of California at Los Angeles. He's returning to um, Maryland with his family uh, in order to live near, near other family, uh, siblings of his, his wife and, um, and her parents. Um, we are very, very happy to have David join our team. David will be the principal counsel assigned to Prince George's County and he will take my spot. <laughs> so that was a very important decision for us to make. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't trust just anybody with this no, wonderful you could board. Not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome David and um, you, will, you will still see me. I'll be popping in and out um, just to help out where needed, but uh, you know, we're very, very, very happy that uh, David has joined us. Thank you, um, and welcome, David. We are really, really pleased to have you. It, it pained us to lose, um, a, as principal counsel, Deborah Borden, but you know, just dream rises to the top, and she became our deputy general counsel, so she's still part of the commission, and as she said, we'll be popping in and out, and we, we were promised we would have outstanding counsel, <laughs> and so that is what we've gotten, and we're gonna offer you the opportunity to say something, and we're glad that, uh, that you will be able to uh, um, join George Johnson and also Peter right here, and Peter is no longer the new person on the block. Okay, <laughs> so do you care to say a word or two? Sure. Well, uh, yeah, it became very clear to me once I started that, uh, you know, usually the best thing is to replace someone who was incompetent or no one liked, but not <laughs> no, only is no she appear to be terrific, um, she's also a terrific person. So it's it, uh, definitely large shoes to fill, uh, figuratively at least. Um, no, it's uh, it's uh, great to be back in Maryland. This is the the third time I've uh, moved back here, and uh, like Deborah mentioned, we have a lot of family in the area, um, and so I'm excited to to serve the citizens of Prince George's and and of course the board and and everyone else uh, with the commission. Um, it's interesting, but uh, you may not be aware, uh, your uh, fame um, certainly. Uh, resounds across the country. I was in Verona, Wisconsin about six months ago uh, pitching some work for my firm at the time and one of the planning uh, veterans there had worked with the commission. Um, in California I knew of the commission uh, because I worked with a planning individual in Santa Rosa that had worked with the, the commission previously so I knew about you long before I joined you so, and, and the reputation Wonderful. preceded you uh, uh, very highly so I'm, I'm proud to be a part of the team. We are so very happy to have you. So congratulations and welcome. Um, and fi my final announcement is um, it's hot off the presses. The Prince George's County Planning Board hired a new director of Parks and Recreation. And our new director of Parks and Recreation is Bill Tyler. Uh, he is already part of the commission family from Montgomery County, but after an extensive search um, requiring net, uh, countless interviews, he soared to the top. And um, I know many of you will be looking forward to working with him, and I, I know you work very, very well. So we welcome Bill Tyler uh, um, to us. He's got 27 years of parks and recreation experience. So we welcome him. And with that, we're going to go proceed with this agenda. We're going to start with um, item two of the draft minutes of the Planning Board's meetings of no November 7th, 14th, and 21st. Is there a motion? Approval. So approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Is there anyone here to oppose the staff's recommendations on items 4B, D, or E, or any board member who wishes to discuss these items? Madam Chair, for consideration of the records for items number 4B, 4D, and 4E, I move adoption of staff findings and approval of the items on the consent agenda in accordance with the recommendation of staff. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, the ayes have it. Item eight followed by seven. Item eight, I understand we have a request for a continuance. That's right, Mr. Gibbs. Pep in your step. Okay. <laughs> for the new year. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair and members of the Planning Board. Jeremy Harwood with the Urban Design se Section. You are correct. Uh, we received uh, letters on January 8th, 2002, requesting a continuance as well as extending uh, the 70-day limit. Um, is it to, to a date specific? 
uh, to January 23rd, okay. 2020. Okay. Meeting. Okay. Um, and if you have any Thank other you. questions. We have, have Mr. Gibbs here. Let's see if he cares to say something. Uh, no, I, I, I submitted the request. Okay. We've been meeting with staff and okay. we're uh, trying to get closer. So uh, we thought the two weeks would be helpful right. to And for the record? 23rd. Edward Gibbs, an Thank attorney you. with offices. Of Thank Mark. you so much. Okay, so um, anything else? No. Was there anyone else here to speak on the request? Mad Madam Chair, just yes. for a moment, just want to uh, make sure it was mentioned on the record that a waiver was also submitted for you this. You did say that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, is there a motion to, to continue to January 23rd? Move, move, move. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, the ayes have it. Item 7. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the Planning Board. For the record, my name is Thomas Burke, and I represent the Urban Design Section. Uh, the proposal before you is a detailed site plan, DSP 19014, known as Greenbelt Metro, which includes a Type 2 tree conservation plan, TCP 2-033-2019, and is listed as Item 7 on the agenda. The applicant is seeking approval of this proposed detailed site plan, which includes amendments to the development district standards for a multifamily uh, development consisting of 354 units and a clubhouse on the subject 15.89 acre parcel, uh, property, excuse me. The site is located in the northern portion of Prince George's County in planning area seven, uh, 67 and council district four within the city of Greenbelt. More specifically, the site is located on the north side of Cherrywood Lane, just west of the outer loop of the uh, Capitol Beltway. The site is comprised of three parcels and bounded to the west by the Capitol Beltway, to the south by Cherrywood Lane with uh, office, office uses in the CO district uh, beyond, uh, to the east by the US uh, District Courthouse in the OS zone, and to the north uh, by undeveloped lands in the RR and the ROS uh, zone districts. <coughs> the subject property shown here is located within the CO zone and designated as the Capital Office Park sub-area mm -hmm. of the Greenbelt Metro Area Sector Plan and SMA, which retain the property in the CO zone and superimposed a development district overlay. This aerial photo shows the pre-developed conditions of the property, showing the site as mostly cleared with only a stormwater management pond located in the southwest corner to support stormwater runoff from Cherrywood Lane. The master plan right-of-way shows Cherrywood Lane as a master plan collector road. This view provides a perspective of the site relative to the surrounding area, including the Greenbelt Metro Station here, the Capitol Beltway, the U.S. District Courthouse, and the Spring Hill Lake community. The site topography slopes gently away from Cherrywood Lane and then drops off at the northern boundary towards the 100-year floodplain. This plan shows the layout and circulation pattern for the community, with access points from Cherrywood Lane here and here. Some important features of the community include a clubhouse and pool, proposed dog park and tot lot, a community garden, two single level garage structures, and this, this area here will be improved with a plaza near the entrance to the community. The plaza will include a bike share station, seating and decorative uh, planting beds, and may also include an art feature or interpretive uh, exhibits. The facades of the five-story residential buildings will contain a combination of glass, brick, masonry, and cementitious siding, with balconies provided on several of the units throughout. The elevations show curated elements such as larger windows and more prominent massing in the front corners to emphasize the entrance of the community 
as shown in this, uh, this perspective. It is important to point out that since the submission of this rendering, the applicant in working with the city of Greenbelt will be removing the parking area here <coughs> and providing green space to complement the plaza, which, which will be located here. A crosswalk will be provided here to connect the two spaces. The, the, also since the uh, submission of this rendering, the applicant in working, again working with the city, has proposed reverse angle parking on, on each side of the road. The clubhouse then can be shown here at the rear of the property. Oh, excuse me, go on. In addition to these features, staff is also recommending that the applicant provide two smaller plazas on either side of the entrance to the community as provided in the recommended condition 1F in the staff report. The applicant is in agreement with these conditions and has already conceptualized a layout. Two garage structures will each contain 18 stalls and will be located, or excuse me, and will include architecture to complement the residential buildings. The applicant is also proposing six electric vehicle charging stations throughout the site and designing for the capability to add several more stations in the future. The West Building will contain a single blade sign running vertically down the sou southern facade of the main uh, near the main entrance. Each building will also contain channel letter building mounted signs located on the parapet of the front and side facades of the main front corners, as well as a sign on the west side facade of the west building. Additionally, a sign with the building address will be located above the main central entrances to each residential building. <clears throat> a monument sign is proposed on the main entrance road into the community. This sign will be double-faced with a painted aluminum cabinet, a recessed face, and halo-lit channel letters carrying the community name. The clubhouse, like the residential buildings, will contain a combination of glass, brick, masonry, and cementitious siding. This 7,100 square foot clubhouse includes the administrative and leasing offices, as well as a 24-hour fitness center, social and entertaining spaces, a business and conference center, locker rooms, and a package concierge. The outdoor space includes a swimming pool with a lounging deck, outdoor grilling area with grilling stations, a fire pit, picnic tables, and social areas. Other amenities provided, provided with this application include a pet spa with dog washing facility, uh, look at, as well as bike lockers located here on the first floor of the Eastern Residential Building. The property is subject to the provisions of the Woodland and Wildlife Conservation or Habitat Conservation Ordinance. Regulated, in, uh, <coughs> regulated environmental features are located along the northern section of the property with the buffer to a stream located north of the site as well as a 100-year floodplain located on the property. So in this area here. The type two tree conservation plan identifies these impacts which were previously approved with the preliminary plan. The urban design staff recommends that the planning board adopt the findings of this report and approve detailed site plan DSP 19014 and type two tree conservation plan TCP 2-033-2019 for Greenbelt Metro, subject to the conditions contained in the staff report dated December 20th, 2019 and as revised by conditions to be provided by the applicant of which staff has reviewed and are in full agreement. This concludes staff's presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Burke. Are there any questions? Mr. Tedesco. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Happy New Year. For the record, Matthew Tedesco with the law firm of McMehosey. Here on behalf of the applicant, Greenbelt Apartments LLC, which is a subsidiary of the NRP group, um, LLC. Um, I'd be remiss if I didn't also just acknowledge Commissioner Dorner's comments earlier this morning. Um, since receiving word, please know that we continue to keep you and your family in our thoughts and prayers. Certainly having two small children, I can imagine um, the stresses, but the challenges also. So just please know that we are continuing to think of you and uh, may God bless you and your family. Um, 
Madam Chair, I want to thank uh, staff, um, Mr. Burke, with uh, an extremely well-written uh, staff report as well as presentation. Um, with me, uh, we have worked very closely with your staff, as I think you could probably glean from um, the fact of the, the presentation by staff here today, as well as uh, the staff report. Uh, with me, though, um, I do, do need to introduce my client, uh, Mr. Josh Woldridge, who's the Vice President of Development, Mr. Joe Torg, Vice President of Development, and Carl Ault, who is the Senior Design Manager for the NRP Group. Not with us, but certainly instrumental to our team was uh, Vike Engineering. Uh, Urban, which was the landscape architects, and Dwell Architect and Design Studios, which were the architects uh, for the project. Uh, you may recall that we were here on October 10th, uh, a few months ago, on the preliminary plan of subdivision. Uh, we went through a kind of uh, a list of superlatives that the NRP group um, um, has accomplished over the years. I won't go through that long list, but I do, I think it does bear repeating that they are, have been in business for 25 years with over 300 projects nationwide. We are very happy and pleased and I'm honored to uh, indicate that three projects are currently uh, proposed in Prince George's County. One is currently under construction, known as the Everly at Largo Station on the Capitol Court project. We have this one, which we hope to break ground this spring or summer with um, hopeful anticipation of this approval today, as well as one at the Prince George's Plaza uh, University Town Center area. Um, the proposed, uh, not only that, but they are a three-time National Multifamily Developer of the Year. Uh, they, interesting and worth repeating, they develop, construct, and self-manage all of their properties. As you can imagine, with a project in the city of Bowie, uh, excuse me, city of Greenbelt, um, slip of the tongue there, uh, city of Greenbelt, we are required to, city of Bowie too, but in the city of Greenbelt, we are required to go through a fairly rigorous um, vetting process with um, with their different advisory boards as well as their planning staff. And Ms. Judith Howerton is here um, representing the city uh, today. We worked intimately with her and uh, Terry Ruby, who's the planning director. But I just want to highlight for you kind of the, the steps that we went through. We met with the advisory planning board on November 20th, as well as the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board on the same night. Their Green Aces, which is the Advisory Committee on Environmental Sustainability, on November 26th, a council work session with the city council on December 2nd, um, another advisory planning board meeting on December 4th, and a council city council regular meeting on December 9th. All of that is reflected in the letter of support from the city, which um, we are very happy to stand before you and say we have secured. As a result of all those meetings, as a result of meeting with your staff, um, the plan further came into focus from when it was originally submitted uh, and really originally envisioned over two years ago. We've been working on this project for two years. Um, some of the things uh, Mr. Burke uh, went through, I just want to highlight again, um, significantly increased the landscaping along Cherrywood Lane. Uh, we added the plaza seating area and bike share station that Mr. Burke indicated there was a three-dimensional slide of that. We added the dog park with the dog slash pet spa, we were corrected to make sure that not everyone has dogs, other folks have pets, so whether okay. they need to be uh, groomed or cleaned, that will be available to them as well. Um, added the tot lot, we added a, the community garden, which is behind the western building. Um, there is a slide with a sun, sun study showing that that will get adequate sun, even though that's a northern exposure. Um, I think Mr. Burke, yeah, up at the top right of your screen so you can see the shadows. We did that study in response to a question of whether that area was uh, viable, which it is. Um, but we added that community garden. Um, we agreed to install uh, additional infrastructure to accommodate uh, as many as up to 32 EV charging stations uh, upon demand. We are proposing from the outset six, as well as all the parking garages. Again, that Mr. Burke indicated there's 18. Um, per garage building, so 36, um, those can be equipped uh, f with EV charging stations as well. Um, that was in response to some of the comments we got from Green Aces to, in to include infrastructure to accommodate additional charging stations upon demand. Um, we removed the eight parking spaces at the main entrance, at the main e exit, uh, Mr. Burke is pointing to on your slide on the overhead. Uh, we added a crosswalk near to kind of connect the both sides near the plazas. And we uh, agreed with staff's recommendation 
to incorporate additional kind of treatments at the corners of the entrance and um, we were asked to provide an exhibit to that which I would like to have introduced. I did share this with Mr. Burke and staff this morning as well as Ms. Howerton. And this will be relevant to my second attached exhibit, which will is the revision to conditions. But that is um, graphically depicting kind of the treatments of the uh, entry features. It shows the crosswalk um, connecting both sides. It shows the scored concrete um, treatment, not only in the plaza where the bike share is, which is kind of center of the, of the main plaza area, but also the same treatment at the entrances when we, and we've added benches as well as additional landscaping to really create a sense of place off of Cherrywood Lane as you arrive into the, into the property. So let me ask you this. So you're just now presenting this today, right? Well, no, we've shared it with staff um, last week. So is it already, in, I don't need to enter it into the record? Is that what you're talking Well, we probably should. Okay, so yeah. I'm gonna have this um, depiction um, which uh, uh, featuring the um, additional landscape features and, and uh, the layout and what have you. Uh, um, and it's already marked as applicants exhibit number A and we'll accept it into the record as identified. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> um, while you're, do I know you're not finished, but I, I'm looking at the letter from the city of Greenbelt, mm -hmm. um, and then there's an attachment, it seems. Yep. Are you, some of which are not um, within our scope. Sure. But are those? It says the applicant has agreed. Are those things that you've already agreed to? We, we've we've agreed to them. Some of the some of them have been incorporated okay. into your conditions. Some, some of them. some have already been addressed. The the ones that are germane to to the agreement between. The applicant in the city will be memorialized in a memorandum okay, understanding fine. with the city. Thank you. Um, just to conclude uh, with the kind of the, the revisions that were realized, uh, Mr. Burke mentioned the reverse angle parking. I'm not aware of a project in Prince George's County proposing reverse angle parking. I think this may be the first one. That it's becoming more and more popular. It's actually been shown through studies to be a safer movement for angled parking to have the reverse angle. We looked into it. It was in direct response to some of the questions we got from the advisory planning board with some of the ground floor units, although we didn't feel they would be impacted by head in angled parking. Um, looking into it, we felt that that was an option that was worth exploring. Everyone seemed to agree that that was a preferred option. So we are proposing reverse angled parking on the one way entrance and then the one way exit. So a car would literally pull in, pass the space and back in. Um, the line of sight is better. It's safer movement, it's safer for getting things in and out of your, your trunk. The, the uh, bicycle, pedestrian, it's, it's safer. So we're, we're endeavoring to um, implement that. And um, like I said, I could be wrong, but I'm not, I certainly haven't had a project that in, uh, implemented that. So um, that is uh, something new, uh, at least for, for, for this practitioner, but happy to, um, to do it in response to the city's uh, concerns. I think um, Mr. Burke did a, a good job of summarizing the amenity package. Um, we certainly added a number of items in response to the city's requests. Uh, and we, we agree 100% with the staff report and its findings in section seven uh, related to the modifications that were requested to the DDO standards. Uh, those are found at pages eight and 11 of your staff report. Um, in addition to the requested parking size reduction is um, page 11. And we would incorporate and adopt our justification statement, which is started at page 19 of your backup. And with that, Madam Chair, I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions, but we do have some very minor, I know you're giving me that look like, yeah, I always do this. Um, <laughs> some very minor requested changes to conditions that we have vetted with your staff, um, as well as I shared them with Ms. Howerton this morning. Um, and I think they're fairly self-explanatory, but I'm happy to review those as well once you get them. And I would ask for that to be, I guess, applicants exhibit B. Okay. Do you need one more? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> And I would, I would say while you're reviewing those, the applicant's exhibit A, uh, it's referenced in new exhibit 1F, um, but it also 
memorialize, uh, Exhibit A also memorializes exhibit, uh, Condition 1K with respect to that crosswalk. So it kind of okay. does two things. So um, since normally we do one, two, um, you, so your first exhibit was already marked um, Applicant's Exhibit Number A, so we're going to just accept this into the record as Applicant's Exhibit B. B. Thank you. Okay. Not number A, letter A. Okay. Okay. Um, and then you said the city has this too? Or yes, no? ma'am. Okay, thank you. Um, and Mr. Burke? Yeah, he's going to. Okay, okay. Staff has had the opportunity to review these amendments and we're in full agreement. Okay, thank you. Um, okay. So with so F everything up to F makes sense to me. G is is, is a deletion. Mm -hmm. okay. So G, I'll just explain. So G, okay. we had amended the we had revised the landscape plan, um, and we have well over twenty um, um, evergreen shrubs in that area in question. So we met with we met with staff, and um, there was an agreement that that sufficient number of plantings in that area to accomplish the goal. Okay. So does the board have any questions? Okay. I just have two questions real okay. quick. Just for clarification, so thank you for the, the good wishes to our family. Um, I, I was a little bit vague earlier, so my daughter has Down syndrome and a number of the heart issues and respiratory issues that she's going through, so I'm going to be learning a lot in the county about our services for social services, and I appreciate the wishes that people provide. Um, but just on, so I like, the, I like the, the site. I think this project looks really nice. You guys did a great job working with staff and, and coming together on this. Um, can you just provide a little more detail on the bike share? So is it is a capital bike share that we're starting to integrate throughout the county and how that's going to work? Because your your proximity to the metro is great. Yeah. Um, and then whether or not people who are off site are going to be able to get and use the bike share. Yeah. And then um, a little bit more about the community garden because that is something new in multifamily developments that we haven't seen. Um, that's sort of cropping up in some of the public spaces um, lately, and it's something that actually my own HOA is going through and considering right now. So knowing a little bit more about what you're putting in I think would be helpful. Yes, um, great questions. Um, the We envision it to be a capital bike share. We understand that they are in communication with the county as well as to implement that throughout, as, uh, throughout the county. Also, um, discussions with the city, I think they've identified up to five locations within the city of Greenbelt. Ms. Howerton may be able to speak to that. Um, we will uh, endeavor to negotiate with whomever the end user is, w whether it's Capital Bike Share or some other agency. Um, I don't know exactly which one it will be. I, we think it's going to be Capital Bike Share, but we certainly will accommodate whomever uh, decides, whatever agency decides is, is chosen. Um, with respect to um, usability of it, yes, absolutely. It's going to be open to the public. The plaza um, staff had had some comments that it was it's about 30 to 40 feet set back from Cherrywood Lane, but there's sidewalks along Cherrywood Lane. We envisioned that as being kind of incorporating into the projects. Um, we added the two other uh, entry features at the corners to make, make it even more activated and inviting, so that it feels like it's open to the public. That plaza is open; will be open to the public. We envision, and we're going to work with the city. Whether there's an art feature, historical plaque, or something, Greenbelt has an interesting story. Um, we are reminded of it a lot when we go before Greenbelt, and so we thought there was an opportunity for new residents to Prince George's County, and particularly potentially to the city of Greenbelt, to have some type of. And that's what you see, kind of at the end of the plaza area. So, I don't know what that'll be, but something along those lines to tell the story potentially of Greenbelt for new residents. Um, we are about 0.6 to the metro. Uh, the interesting about, thing about this project being in the Capitol Office Park, uh, which is where my office is, the federal courthouse is, so some of our other members of the bar know exactly where this is. Um, there is not really mixed use in that area. It's all office. So this, for the first time, will actually integrate a mixed-use project into the Capitol Office Park, really, truly, for the first time, creating a live-work potential environment for people that work at the courthouse, people that work in my office building, and others in that area to have a place to walk back and forth to work. Um, certainly, folks that work in that area can get on a bike, drive it you know, to the metro, which is about 0.6 of a mile. There'll be a station there. Capital bike share or whatever bike share station there, and vice versa. So, um, 
We're also looking at implementing bike shares in other projects on the other side of Cherrywood, which is to be determined. That'll be a future project for you guys to look at, but it'll be a nice connect connection on for Greenbelt West in particular. Um, as it relates to um, your other question regarding, um, remind me again, I'm sorry. On the community the garden, garden, sorry, the yeah. community garden, thank you. Um, yeah, that was something that came up in just our charrettes with um, advisory planning board and, and some of the other boards in the city and whether that was something that we could implement. So we looked at the site. The site has challenges. There's, there's floodplain, the Indian Creek is to our north. There's primary management area uh, to the north and west. There's an existing stormwater management pond. There's topography on the east side. So we really try to, um, and the project evolved, and we, we, we kind of changed the things around, and we had that area. We always envisioned the area behind that western building to be some type of, whether it was bocce or some type of amenity feature. And we were encouraged to look, explore community garden, which we did. Um, NRP has done that in some other projects, so they're familiar with it. Um, we, I have a picture from, if I could, Michael, if I could just have these pass out. I'll defer to you if you want to have these marked, but if you uh, flip to. Are they packets or are they one picture or? It's stapled. Okay, thank you. But it's the last, I didn't want to stand here and separate everything. It's the last page of that packet. Okay. And that shows, uh, Commissioner Dorner, that shows it in, in greater detail um, with respect to the planters, raised planters, um, a toolbox shed area for equipment. Obviously, we have to have a hose uh, spigot for water, a rain barrel to, to also capture rainwater from the roof to reuse in the garden. And you can see graphically uh, on the right-hand side kind of our vision of what that would be with raised planters. And obviously, you know, with the eight, with the raised ones, those are ADA accessible for folks who that that may be in wheelchairs or um, have other nice. needs. Okay, nice. so um, it is very nice. Um, <clears throat> if only I were talented enough to do that at home. But anyway, um, so we we're can't promise anything. Will you know that how well somebody's tomatoes will grow? But okay. we're going <laughs> to endeavor to make sure they grow they well. Okay, yeah. so we're going to accept the, this packet which um, depicts the um, amenities and features as well as the community garden. Um, we're going to accept this into the record as applicants exhibit C. Thank you. So with that, Madam Chair, I think I've, I've covered what I needed to. Unless there's any other questions, I'm happy okay. to take a seat. I know Ms. Howerton's here. Yeah, um, you'll be able to speak. Um, um, and then um, Ms. Howerton will come for for the city of Greenville, then you have a little opposition, and then you'll um, and you'll have the opportun opportunity to come back and respond. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Thank you, um, Ms. Howerton. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning. Happy New Year to all of you. Happy Members New Year. A couple board. of things. Yeah. Um, if you could raise the microphone, no, raise it up closer to you, so that way you don't have to bend. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's good. <laughs> um. So the city of Greenbelt is in support of this project. Um, they came before the city council on December 9th and was voted four to two in favor of the project with conditions. Um, the applicant is in agreement with our conditions. Okay. And so um, it's been a pleasure working with Mr. Burke and Mr. Tedesco. So that's all Thank you so much. Yeah. If you could um, just, even though I called your name, if you could take a moment to identify yourself. Oh, yes. Um, Judith Houghton with the city of Greenbelt. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are there any questions? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mr. Orleans. Um, Mr. Tedesco, you want to watch your bag a little bit there? Okay. Thank you. If I wanted to kick it, I'd. No, no, no. Or Mr. Tedesco. We don't, we don't do that in here. Mr. Tedesco, it's 2020, a new, a new year, a new decade, and all positivity, clear vision. Unlike all the years prior to 2020, okay. when the planning board, among others, had unclear vision. That's oh, no, vision. no, 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 no. Clearer. My name can you, is Bill can, you, can you just, just lower the microphone a little bit, though, mm -hmm. so we can hear you? Okay, thank My you. My name is Bill Orleans, so I'm identified. Uh, I think I probably have nothing persuasive to say uh, to this board uh, or to the representative of, of the city of Greenbelt nor to the, the developers of this proposal. Uh, but 
uh, I have to tell you, I, I think it is a bad plan, or if it were to be a good plan, it's in a bad place. Uh, they reference this as a Greenbelt Metro station, Greenbelt Metro development. Uh, Mr. Tedesco, again, I heard this morning, uh, praises the mixed-use element within Capitol Office Park. It, it's around the corner and up the street from the station, close enough that you might say if the whole of the area were to be developed, redeveloped, it could be part of what could be considered a metro station development. It's across the street from uh, a single-use, uh, substantial property that's single-use, Office Park, much of which is still vacant. Uh, uh, rather than claim credit for uh, live work opportunities with a residential uh, development on one side of the street uh, and the existing commercial use on the other side of the street, capital, the owners of Capital Office Park should be encouraged to uh, utilize much of its at-grade parking to have infill development where it would be real mixed use. Uh, as I say, I don't expect that I am going to persuade anyone, but this is a development that's not integrated into Greenbelt. It's not integrated into Prince George's County. It's uh, essentially a, a one entrance. Uh, uh, it will be a ghetto of fairly high-priced uh, apartments uh, that will be apart from the city and not really a part of the county. It's not the kind of development that I think should be approved, uh, but it is like the development that this board years prior to 2020 have approved. So as I say, I don't expect to change minds, but uh, I So do you have the staff report, Ms. Dorlings? I do, but I was okay, only good. beginning to read it. When okay, okay, because you do I actually thought this was going to be later in the morning or early afternoon, but you changed your agenda while I was out of the room. No, so. no I didn't change. We didn't change the agenda at all. Oh, uh, well, I was out of the room. Okay. National Harbor has already been resolved? No. D d no, it hasn't. D there's, I don't know why you think there's no set order. We, ca we call the order in, in, in whatever way it makes sense for us. It's not... Uh, uh, it's not detailed on the agenda. Really, you may not remember, but I'm almost a sequential kind of person. If I see one, two, three, four, yeah. I figure five comes after four, and not <laughs> four, three. I, I, I apologize. Okay, no problem. But that's why we put right on the front of the agenda um, is for the committee, and in no way we put it in bold. In no way indicates the order in which the cases will be called. That's on the front page of the agenda. True enough, and I okay. should have okay. remembered that, but nope. I nonetheless no thought it was going to be later in the. No problem. <laughs> But the reason I'm, I'm bringing about the, the uh, bringing up the um, the uh, um, technical staff report is because um, you know that the preliminary plan for this was approved. Uh, uh, I, I, uh, over my objections, yes, I yeah. do. No okay, but it was a, a long, long time ago, and so now we're. Well, talking it wasn't that long ago. It was a matter of some months ago. Okay, so let me. But see. it was in 2019, and that was a long, long time ago. So. Okay. Okay, that was the second one, yes. Okay, and it was replaced, um, uh, which replaced the one from twenty from ninety four. So yes, there was the one, um, yes, um, in twenty nineteen, correct. And so now we're at a different stage in in the um, process. We're talking about a site plan. We're not. We're no longer talking about um, the lots. I believe it's a bad plan for that site. And for the record, I've been told I'm incorrect in thinking that a statute should exist but I, I don't believe I'm inaccurate thinking it would make sense for a statute to exist. Why anybody who by right can build if zoning allows for it, who doesn't own the property, or I would prefer to say hold title to the property, is allowed to engage in speculative development by coming to the building board and say, this is what we're offering to do here, and the board thinks, likes the facades and likes the bike share and likes the rendition, the renderings that are, are pretty, uh, approve it when they're not going to hold title to the property unless you approve it. I don't think any, uh, this board or any planning board should approve development uh, if the people in fact asking for that approval don't already have stake in the ground, if you will, if they don't already hold title to the land. Uh, but it's a bad plan for that site. There are many other alternative uses of that site that I presume you don't want me to go into, but I'd be happy to. Uh, but I don't like, these are fun folks, let me stipulate that. 
and for the record, let me stipulate that the planning board are for in fact. I, but I, it's a bad plan for that site, and I oppose it. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Orleans. Okay. Um, was there anyone else who wished to speak whose name I did not call? Okay, Mr. Tedesco. And I'll, I'll be brief, Madam Chair. Um, Can you raise the microphone? Yes, of course. Okay. Uh, I want to thank Ms. Howardson for her comments. Uh, the feelings are mutual with respect to having worked together for many, many, many months on this project with her and Ms. Ruby. Um, in response to Mr. Orleans, with, all, with the utmost respect to Mr. Orleans, who is a very active community member in the city of Greenbelt, who attends, I promise you, every single meeting that I went through was at. Um, Thankfully, um, all the boards and the commissions and the, the powers that be within the city um, disagreed with Mr. Orleans with respect to his uh, personal views of the project. Um, I will say we do believe it is a transit-oriented development. Um, NRP actually specializes in transit-oriented development, having now developed at Greenbelt, at Largo, and Prince George's Plaza. We have purposefully set out to accommodate four means um, of accessibility to the metro, whether that be private bike with the numerous in, uh, interior bike lockers, the bike share program, the, a, bus, a new bus shelter that we have commissioned with the city of Greenbelt that will be uh, constructed on the frontage of our property, as well as obviously the walkability uh, with uh, connecting sidewalks. Uh, with respect to Mr. Orleans' uh, objection to an applicant seeking an entitlement on a piece of property, um, I know this board knows this, but I think it's worth, it's worth repeating. We are required to have not only applicants sign applications, but also property owners, which was done in this case. The property owner signed the application, um, has been determined by your legal staff, um, uh, and by law, once that occurs, there's an agency relationship that's created between the applicant and the owner. Um, what the applicant proposes and put, puts forward to this board on its behalf is also through that agency relationship on the behalf of the owner. Uh, certainly many practitioners appear before you with contracts that are conditioned upon certain uh, events occurring, whether that be approval of a detailed site plan, an issuance of a permit, the, rec the recording of a record plat or whatever, whatever. That's not unique and that's certainly not grounds to uh, disqualify this application. Um, again, Mr. Orleans uh, would like to see better uses on the property. We think this is the best use possible. That property, as the chair indicated, was platted uh, for a subdivision back in the 90s for three office buildings as part of the Capitol Office Park that were never built. Um, this is the reutilization of a vacant piece of property. It is within the DDO. It was purposely put in the Development District Overlay Zone of the sector plan, so to, of the Greenbelt sector plan, so to, to uh, allege or argue that it's not with it's not for Greenbelt it's not for it, it it I don't know how it could not be when it's part of the sector plan that covers almost two square miles of the city of Greenbelt so um, with that madam chair uh, I respectfully request as the council did your support and approval as conditioned by your staff and revised by applicants exhibit and I, I apologize for the misnumbering but it would be B instead of two um, applicants exhibit B and with that we um, thank you for your time Thank you. Are there questions of Mr. Just Tedesco at this time? Commissioner, Mr. Tedesco, Commissioner just a brief question. It's more for information. There was no consideration to putting, since it's a mixed use, you're going to have, what, over 350 some residences there. There was no consideration given to some limited retail? There was, actually, in, in this, the early on in the process. Like I said, we've been, we've been working with the city for over two years, really, from the first time we met with them to today. It's been over two years. And that was something that we were asked to explore, which we did. Um, people will agree to disagree, but the, the, the traffic on Cherrywood Lane is just not high enough to okay. warrant commercial. We, we tried. We thought maybe a small little coffee shop or right. something like that um, with the courthouse and the office park. Um, that hasn't materialized. In, in fact, the Starbucks at the hotel that used to be the Marriott has closed. That's not even right. there anymore. Um, the city has done a good job creating a food truck hub at the Capitol Office Park, which um, provides lunchtime activity in the office park itself. But all that coupled with the low level of traffic, even though 354 units seems like a lot, it's really not from a commercial user. They kind of mm -hmm put a pin on a map, draw a circle, and when you draw that circle, you've got a significant amount of commercial on 193 
you know, two miles down the road at Cherrywood. So um, that would cannibalize anything. It just, it, it wasn't viable. Okay. okay. Uh, one thing I was thinking of, because I saw it in, in, in Alexandria, is in a similar project, they had a Lidl Express. And so, which was, it basically served the individuals that were residing right within the community. Right. I mean, we're fairly close to the Beltway Plaza with the Giant and mm -hmm. um, the AMC theaters and other amenities. So um, it, it just, it, it wasn't, we, we looked at it, we, we did explore it, we tried it to be, as you, I hope you can tell from the long, laundry list of items, we've done everything we can to comply and, re and respond to everything the city asked us to do. That was one of them, that was just one of the just ones that we just couldn't pull off. Thank you. Thank you. Are there other questions at this time? Okay, um, thank you. Thank you. Was there anyone else who wished to speak? I'm seeing none. If the board has no questions or if you have nothing else to add, Mr. Burke, is there, do you? Nothing else to add. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, legal, anything to add? Okay. Is there a motion? Madam Chair, I move that we adopt the findings of staff and approve DSP-19014 and type two and TCP2-033-2019 along with the associated conditions as outlined in staff's report and is further modified uh, by applicant exhibit number B. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, the ayes <clears throat> have it. Okay, so we have companion cases five and six followed by nine and 10. Look a little tight there, you could spread out. <laughs> okay, Mr. Hobbit. Good Thank to you, come. Madam Chair and members of the Planning Board. For the record, once again, my name is Jeremy Hurlbut with the Urban Design Section. As a matter of housekeeping, you should have received additional backup, which was entered into the record before uh, Wednesday at noon. Uh, the item is the Historic Preservation Commission memo uh, with their recommendation. Yes. Um, I just want to make on sure. A I have it. I'm just making sure everyone has yeah. it. Okay. Thank you. We do. No problem. The, the applicant is seeking an amendment to the DSP for the construction of 2,467 parking space or, or space parking garage and 150 room hotel on parcel seven of the larger DSP. Staff is recommending approval with conditions of the DSP. The companion case is DDS-654 uh, is requesting a departure from the parking space size which staff is supports and a departure from the driveway with within the parking garage which staff is recommending disapproval of. The, the site is located in the southern portion of Prince George's County in planning area 80 um, in Council District 8 as indicated by the red circle. More specifically the overall beltway parcel outlined here in red is located about one mile east of the Woodrow Wilson Bridge in the southwest quadrant of the Capitol Beltway in Maryland 210, which is located here. The property is zoned MXT zone, and there are no overlay zones on the property. The aerial photo uh, shows uh, the, the 49 acre overall DSP, which is surrounded to the south by and west and east by um, 
commission parkland, including the Oxen Hill Manor, directly to the east of the subject site, which is located in the southwest corner, is the location of parcel seven. The site topography slopes down to the waterfront um, for the entirety of the project, and including on parcel seven, Oxen Hill Manor sits uh, above the, the, the property with Betty Bloom Park uh, to the south where the, the pond is located. Um, this slide shows the master plan right away, um, which includes the Capitol Beltway, uh, Indian Head Highway, and Oxen Hill Road, um, which th the parcel fronts on. Uh, parcel seven in this bird's eye is outlined in red um, and is the subject of today's application. Uh, in Oxen Hill Manor, you can see more clearly here, M the MGM Casino and Hotel is located just north of MGM National Avenue, which is a one-way roadway that g ascends up the hill. The site plan, uh, this applicant, as I s stated, is requesting just under 2,500 parking spaces in a parking structure to be located on the east side of the site, which will be accessed uh, to the third level of the parking from at this location on the northeast corner of the property as well as to the west 150 room hotel with a single access point and turnaround circle and a single access which accesses the parking structure on the bottom level of the structure. Um, the hotel requires 75 parking spaces. The remainder of it should be noted that, that the previous uses approved within the Beltway parcel and the National Harbor development were found to provide sufficient parking per the MXT zone requirements and the additional parking spaces in the proposed parking mm -hmm. garage above those required for the proposed hotel are being provided to ensure that peak parking demand are always met for the unique uses of National Harbor. Uh, this site has an approved TCP-1 and TCP-2. The proposed application is located in an area that was previously cleared as part of this development, and all woodland mitigation has been met. The, the this uh, rendering shows the garage and the pr proposed pedestrian bridge, uh, which will go over MGM Avenue, um, which is referred to in the report as the Sky Bridge. Um, this will connect the MGM Casino to the garage and to the Heritage Trail, um, which will also connect to uh, the Potomac Waterfront and the rest of the National Harbor development, including the proposed hotel, um, which is not shown in this rendering. This is another angle of the sky bridge, which shows the glass and metal uh, elements which will match the and be cohesive with the parking structure in the MGM Grand Hotel as well as the elevator and sta stairwells um, which will provide access for pedestrians to the ground level and up to the sky bridge. Um, not shown in this rendering is the pedestrian connection which was shown on the site plan. Uh, this shows the the viewable facade of uh, the parking structure, uh, which will be clad in pre or perforated metal panels, um, as well as will have signage on the outside of and a dark precast concrete base and a lighter precast top, which will be similar to um, the MGM Grand. What is not shown is the hotel, which would be located in this area within for this rendering. The back side of the, the south and east sides of the garage um, will have a light tan brown precast treatment in a but uh, forested parkland today. Part of that perforated garage uh, or perforated metal panel will wrap around the garage and, and as you remember uh, cars are driving away from the site uh, up the hill in this image. Um, this rendering shows uh, the up lit uh, LED system which the garage will have which will enable um, the garage to be lit with a variety of colors in this case uh, a gradient of green to blue and this in relationship to the garage to um, the MGM hotel and casino.
the hotel architecture is an eight-story hotel with 150 rooms, which was just south of the, the garage and west. Uh, the modern style hotel has three blue vision uh, glass towers, which break up the facade. It's mostly composed of white precast. Uh, the backside mirrors that, but it eliminates some of the glass and adds more dark precast, as well as providing a canopy uh, to define the entrance and the pedestrian realm at the drop-off circle in front of the hotel. Um, the applicant provided uh, two graphics or a number of exhibits. This one shows the connection point to the MGM casino, as well as the over 800 foot uh, distance from Oxen Hill Manor and the change in elevation um, be between the tallest point of the hotel and garage and Oxen Hill Manor. Uh, this exhibit was requested by staff and shows in the ghosting on the, the right hand images the hotel in the background and the garage and the sky bridge in the foreground um, as they will generally be located or um, based on the applicant's uh, exhibit within the woodlet, wooded area. Are there any photos that we have that shows what it would look like Not in, in the winter time? Uh, we don't, uh, unfortunately, the timing of the application and the, the process, it was a little pre-winter, so not all the foliage has fallen off. Um, so this was, um, you know, when we requested, they provided. Um, also uh, provided was a balloon test, which shows the height of the hotel tower in relation to the landscape and the, the parking structure. Um, this additional exhibit shows the pedestrian connections for the sidewalk to the hotel entrance and to the Heritage Trail and to the parking structure itself, as well as up to um, the elevator bank and stairwell that ascends up to the Sky Bridge that would then, uh, in a subsequent DSP, uh, the MGM property will need to amend their parking structure to eliminate, I believe it's three spaces, to gain access into the casino. The proposed signage for the garage um, is shown here with signage for the overall National Harbor development um, with uh, hotel signage to go underneath it as well as the MGM uh, si signage and National Harbor under it. The hotel also proposed signage above the pedestrian canopy and on the south face of uh, the structure. Uh, the, the request for the DDS is asking for a nine and a half by 19 parking space, which staff supports. Uh, the reduction in the driveway width uh, from 22 feet to 17 feet 10 inches. The applicant has not, uh, it did provide additional information after the 35 day limit, uh, which we considered, but staff did not find that they had demonstrated that the, the um, it would function in that way. These show all the different aisles of the parking structure. Additionally, the, st st stat or the applicant provided this, uh, which shows um, how the, the parking or turning template, which shows how the parking spaces would access the 75 degree parking and the encroachment onto adjacent parking spaces in order to do that. Um, and this is the lighting plan. There's a condition within the staff report re requesting uh, that the lighting plan be updated to reduce um, the amount of, um, uh, of lighting that spills off the property in, as this had gone pr to the HPC. Uh, and they included two conditions, one about the lighting to reduce the size of the light poles on the top of the garage as well as the le living wall uh, to further ensure that the east elevation is not seen um, from the property or from the property. This video was prepared by uh, park and planning staff as part of that HPC meeting and shows sight lines to the, the parking structures, sky bridge and hotel in the distance as well as the relationship to the MGM casino. Um, Urban Design staff recommends the Planning Board adopt the findings of this report and recommends disapproval of the, the 
departure from the development standards for the reduction in the driveway width in the, in the parking garage and approval of the departure of development standards for the nine and a half by 19 foot parking spaces and approval of the detailed site plan for DDS 07073-12 for National Harbor Beltway parcel subject to the conditions in the staff report. The applicant is proposing changes to the conditions and findings and, and staff has agreed to some of these changes but not all. Thank you. Are there any questions of Mr. Hobbit? Yeah, I just have some questions. Um, and so this is pretty car centric but for obvious reasons with the location next to the highway and the casino. Um, but can you go into a little bit about the Heritage Trail? Because something that is in that area mm -hmm. on, the, on Oxen Hill Road, it, it's terrible for bike access up there. And if you try and cross over around where the, the outlets are and everything, which is directly related to this intersection, it gets very hairy going up in there. I know that's one of our priorities is developing the trail going north through that area and kind of connecting um, the outlets with the communities and with the National Harbor. Yeah, the intersection right there. So is there any... Is there any work being done on that area to improve the bike access? And can you also just go into the improvements that are being done in the Her Heritage Trail area? Um, I, I can't speak to that. Someone from Parks may be able to speak to that. Uh, really, this applicant, is, for this DSP, it, it did not bleed off of the site. Those were handled typically with previous applications. But understanding the issue, I'm not sure. Oh, so I need just that. Okay. Or yeah, the trails, I, I should say. I Hello. Oh. Yes. Good afternoon. Uh, Brian Barnett Woods with Transportation Planning. Um, so this area, you're right. The the bike infrastructure that's on Oxen Hill Road, as especially go toward um, the national park, is very difficult. Um, there was a recent um, TLC plan, or excuse me, Transportation Land Use Connections plan um, from the COG program that looked at trail connections between Eastover and Forest Heights and the park as well. And we hope that in the future, as more development takes place, we can look at improving this key connection um, between, I guess, where the entrance to the casino is and the national park, where the, the roadways um, right of way width is very tight. Um, it makes it difficult for easy retrofitting of bicycle facilities. Um, however, that connection is also noted in the National Park Service's uh, trails plan as being one of their key improvements, um, and it's something that we hope in the future we'll be able to help contribute to. Okay, and I hope that since the applicant is here, that they're hearing that as well, that if you do have future work kind of going forward in that area, or if you can assist with kind of getting that jump started, that'd be very nice. Because pedestrian access to your site is extremely important, whether it be by foot or by bike in addition to car, and you've got the outlets right there. Um, so kind of thinking about the, not just the parking garage sitting there, but the holistic approach of the area would be useful. Thank you. I've got a question as well. Um, I'm worried about the lack of connectivity to National Harbor. Hi, once again, That's Brian Rushwoods. I mean, the way it is now is you cannot walk safely from the MGM or this new hotel to National Harbor and that we've had people at, at our budget meetings where they say in order to get safely to National Harbor, they have to cross the Woodrow Wilson Bridge and come over from the Virginia side, which is like ridiculous. Uh, crossing the river to come back would be out of the way. <laughs> um, so from the, the subject site, uh, the Potomac Heritage Trail, it kind of goes up and down parallel to the hotel and then I believe they've updated the trail that kind of goes ar around the existing harbor to make it a more paved surface, and that goes directly to National Harbor from, I guess, the southwest point of the subject site. Um, so you can use that trail that to get there. That doesn't address crossing Oxen Hill Road. Um, currently, there are bike lanes that end um, at, at the at the intersection we're talking about where the, the outlet malls are. Mm -hmm. um, north of that area, the road is maintained by the, the State Highway Administration, and south of it, Public Works did do a project a few years ago to add bike lanes with uh, the roundabouts, um, on, and that goes toward- Oxen Hill Road. Yes. Um, I, I agree, and as we see future development, that intersection is a, is a key point for improvements. Okay. Are there any additional questions at this time? Okay. Um, Mr. Hobbit, anything else before we go to the applicant? No, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Mr. Gingles. 
No, no retiree name dropping. <laughs> good, good afternoon. I was hoping to say good morning, but good afternoon, oh. Madam Chairman, oh. members of the board. Oh. <laughs> Happy 2020, and hope you all had a wonderful uh, time away, and uh, as I did. Um, Thank and you. I bring you greetings you. from uh, Mr. I, uh, I said no, no retiree no name, dropping. name dropping. Okay. Well, I'm not <laughs> name dropping. Okay. okay. Go All ahead. Right. Go ahead. You bring greetings from Mr. Mr. Hirsch. Uh, Alan Hirsch, Hirsch, who I did see recently, <laughs> and um, he told me that dropping his name won't be helpful to me in 2020, but <laughs> I do want to bring you those greetings anyway. So. All right. Um, <clears throat> So first off, uh, and I do want to go to uh, a couple of the questions that have been um, uh, suggested or issues that have been suggested for us to respond to by, by uh, okay. members of the board. But first off, I'd like to introduce the suits um, who are with me here today. Uh, but um, Is that the television program? Yes, um, absolutely. Since people so, are going to be working for a living, uh, you never know who might return, but go ahead. Um, uh, sitting right here and sort of working from uh, right to left, uh, a gentleman who I've been working with for now, we're starting a quarter of a century working together, and that's how long we've been working on the product, John Peterson, uh, who's going to talk to you a little bit about the um, proposal that we have uh, for you today. Uh, with the Peterson companies, John's been involved, and many of you've probably seen him or worked with him in, in other cases, but been involved with projects since the inception of it. Uh, also with me is Mr. Mark Scott, who's with Dewberry Architect and helped us uh, with this great design, uh, looking a lot at what we already had there and to make sure that we had a, a design that um, would be reflective of the type of interests that we've tried to keep and maintain for National Harbor. Uh, next to him is Mr. Peter Hackett. Uh, Mr. Hackett actually is the guy that built the patio uh, for Oxen Hill Manor and has been with us uh, at the Peterson Company for years and years and uh, is the project manager overseeing this uh, and has brought this group together. Uh, next to him is Mr. Um, John Judge, who's with Desmond, and he'll actually be having some of the conversation, particularly about the interior workings of the garage and the part of the departure that we've asked for. Uh, I'm going to work my way back, left from okay, there. Let me, let me, let me, so let me ask this question. Sure. You're anticipating your presentation to take about how long? Because I'm looking at these uh, the folks that you intend to have speak. At some point, you're going to tell me how long my presentation is well, going I mean, to take. Well, I mean, just I will, but you you can give me your first su suggestion. I I, uh, I would expect us to take uh, in the area of about uh, 20 minutes. Okay, so so, so that's your um, optimistic expectation. Okay. No, that's my. I actually think we'll be less, really? but okay. That's why I raised it up. Miss okay. Miss Bailey was looking at me, and so I raised it up a little. Okay. Bit. Okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, I mean, it's, it is okay. I was just I'm contemplating I'm switching for a second, but that's okay. Go ahead. 21 because of the extra time. <laughs> <laughs> the youngster is next. And that look is 20, back to 20. The youngster in our group, uh, Mr. David Bickle, who's engineer with Soltes. And then I saw Jeff Perron. And a lot of the art and a lot of what you see at National Harbor, all the design, architecture, et cetera, John, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Piranha has uh, been the lead guy on. He oversees the covenants and a lot of things that go down there, and pretty much anything that gets constructed there uh, gets his look first. And then Mr. Linhart, who's been uh, before you several times uh, uh, handling traffic circulation for us as we've gone through the garage. Um, just a quick response on a couple of items uh, with regard to the analysis that was done to show the buffering of Oxen Hill Manor on, with regard to the garage, that was done in mid-November. There was a tremendous amount of foliage off of the property. Uh, and we tried, we did the balloon test over the course of time to make sure we were getting the right heights uh, that were in there. And that image that you see isn't showing the building, it's actually showing the placement of the building, which is gonna be behind that foliage. Uh, second, I would just note, and a lot of what we're going to be discussing today 
So when you look at the waterfront, we actually had a parking management plan approved. And back then when we did that in the early uh, 2000s for the first of the garages that we were doing on the waterfront, recall that a lot of that did not go through site plan. But we actually offered a lot of innovative techniques that we've refined over time. And that dealt with, uh, at that time, doing with smaller spaces, doing garage configurations that were slightly different. And we continue to evolve those, and I think some of what John's going to talk about uh, is that. Uh, lastly, just along the trail, we do have uh, Kent Digby, who runs National Harbor, constantly working and, and is in touch with different folks at uh, your um, park staff over time to make sure that that access, as well as both pedestrian and vehicular access, we're constantly refining. We've done a number of improvements that we were able to do, it didn't necessarily require, require us to do additional site plan, but we've done a number of improvements to refine how both pedestrians and vehicles access the harbor. Uh, it's a very important element of our, of our um, visiting experience. And with that, I'd like to turn to uh, Mr. Peterson to just give a little overview, and then I'd like to have Mr. Desmond come up. Uh, we think the majority of the disagreement with staff has to do with the owl width. We'll address any other issue that you'd like us, but that's why the majority of the presentation is going to probably come from Mr. Desmond after Mr. Peterson. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Peterson, please identify yourself first. Uh, John Peterson, uh, okay. CEO with uh, the Peterson Companies. Thank and uh, thank you for your time today, Madam Chair and, and everybody. Uh, this is an important uh, day for us because this is what we hope to be an additional improvement to National Harbor. Um, I've been involved with National Harbor since its inception. We bought it 24 years ago. I remember the first day walking the shores of it um, just after we had bought it with my father and my son, who at the time was five. It was a really cold day. Ice was frozen all the way out to 100 yards. Anyways, uh, but since then, we've been pretty busy. You know, I think we got our first approval here back in uh, 1998, so we've, uh, that was a long time ago. And I, if you just look at National Harbor, we've been pretty busy. And as we've gone along the way, we've always tried to make National Harbor better than anything uh, else that kind of exists. We went to the detail of putting in granite curbs and granite steps. And that's what you do as a long-term owner of, of real estate. You know, that's in our mind what you do to make the best community. And if you look at where we started, you know, we started with Gaylord and the hotels and the retail and the restaurant. And since then, um, we've brought in public art. We've done the statues. Uh, you know, just a couple of little things that have helped the area. The, the, the outlets, uh, Top Golf, the wheel, you name it. Um, uh, you know, I think this is something that all of Prince George's is, is pretty proud of. We as a family are. Again, this is something Milt and I, on a day-to-day -day basis, we still, uh, arm wrestle, let's say, for over certain issues of how we're going to push things forward. But um, it's it's great that uh, he and I still have the opportunity to, to to move this project forward because it's it was visionary uh, back in its day, and we are proud of what we have done. Um, we try and stay ahead of the curve um, and take great detail uh, time and and attention to the detail. Um, again, all the artwork and everything that you see there. And so this is just another example of us trying to stay ahead of, the, ahead of the curve. The last thing that can happen is not have great parking and enough parking. That's what sends people away. And when we designed National Harbor and the parking garages, it was all about easy access and in. If you think about it, it's right-hand turn, right-hand turn, right-hand turn. You don't have to go through a light to get into our parking garage and walk to the waterfront. So um, I'm, I'm just here to emphasize the fact that we think this is going to be a great new addition um, to National Harbor as a whole, um, and it's 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 kind of visionary and doing it prior to really that the need is there to ensure that we can't afford to fail. We can't afford to fail, and this is just another example of um, making sure that National Harbor continues to be the success that it is. Um, and uh, you know, uh, it's 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 now one of the largest uh, tourist attractions. In, uh, in the state, and we're really proud of that. And uh, I think we've changed uh, this part of the part of the world, and we're, we're proud of that. So today, we're seeking your approval for uh, a new addition to a, a greater national harbor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Peterson. Um, we appreciate your your comments, and, and National Harbor did has provided tremendous amenities mm -hmm. to Prince George's County, and some of us have, have worked through that. Um, through I know I was here. Um, 
at the planning board in, in the capacity of legal counsel back then, and I know you were on, weren't you on the council. I was on the council, and I made a note of the term back in the day and long time ago. So we'll talk. <laughs> about that. We'll talk about that later. With your Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much. You. Thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, with that, I'd like to bring forth uh, Mr. Um, John Judge, who's with Desmond, who Thank will you. talk a little bit about the internal circulation yeah. of the garage, and then I'll come back to the rest of the items that we okay. like to Thank discuss. Thank you. While we're doing that, I have to correct myself. I was a legal counsel. I was chair back then. Duh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you were legal counsel. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. <laughs> I figured it wasn't appropriate for me to make that correction. <laughs> Sometimes you exercise great judgment. <laughs> uh, sir, if you can raise the microphone a little bit, that would be helpful. Okay. I can just park in garages that I've actually designed for my firm has. Thank you. <laughs> so if we could uh, just kind of move on. Brief introduction to just myself. I am an officer with the company. Um, I've uh, had uh, 34 years of uh, online um, structural engineering experience with a focus in transportation structures. Um, the, those transportation structures include parking facilities. I've been with Desmond um, a little over a uh, quarter century. Um, so literally, I've been with the company for three lifetimes, specifically two son, two daughters and one son. Um, so, um, and uh, I am a uh, licensed professional engineer in 12 states, including Maryland, um, and a number of, uh, of platitudes and organizations. So before we get into, you know, some specifics about, um, but go ahead. Uh, about the, uh, the, the the parking mechanism and the drive aisle itself, I thought it'd be instructive just to kind of take a step back and talk about exactly how we got here. Um, the uh, the site itself was uh, was very well introduced, especially the uh, the idea of the driveway accesses, um, the one at the left at level one and the one at the right at level three, and that's just working with the train of the site. There's about a 25 foot grade difference as you work diagonally from one side to the other side. So rather, so we're trying to work with those grades and make the site work um, in terms of uh, not being so destructive on, on the overall environment. Um, so the available footprint is the available footprint. Um, we, uh, you know, in order to provide um, the idea of uh, 2,500 parking stalls within available real estate, the division works out to be about eight parking levels. And with eight parking levels and with the number of spaces and the number of the amount of traffic we anticipate in the peak hour, that dictates the provision of two ramping systems, um, which furthermore, from the idea of, uh, of you know, traffic management and the two ramping systems, um, we've established what's called a double O design. And it's called a double O because uh, you circulate going up the garage around the outside of the facility. 
And as you're circulating the outside of the facility, you can see all of the available parking spaces. And um, as you're circulating the outside of the facility, when, with one revolution, you actually go up two levels. So if you enter the garage at level three, you make one revolution, you'll be at level five. And then a second revolution, you'll be up at level seven. So it's very quick okay. to get through the parking facility. Um, and then in terms of processing the traffic, that led to the decision um, to utilize one-way traffic for this particular design. And if we could go to the next slide. Um, the, uh, the advantages um, of one-way traffic compared to two-way traffic, simply put, is that the facility has a much better level of organization. The drivers can get into the middle of the parking space much easier, so you don't have mm -hmm. one driver all the way to the right and next driver all the way to the left and, and having some, uh, some door friction with each other. And, um, and, and from that perspective, um, the functional flow is intuitive. You, follow, you just follow the way that the traffic is leading you, and you will be able to negotiate the facility without a lot of um, confusion and decision points, which leads for a greater speed of operation, which is really important in large volume garages that do invent in event mode, which this garage certainly will do. Um, the, uh, the nice thing about one-way parking is, is that allows us to potentially reduce um, the building width. Um, it leads to a more efficient floor plate in certain instances. Um, commonly, we use parking angles ranging anywhere between 45 and 75 degrees for one-way for one-way parking. Um, and the re and frankly, the driver behind the decision of proper angle really depends on how much real estate you have available to do your parking trays. For this particular site. Um, our available real estate from a parking perspective is fairly unlimited. So we made the decision to utilize a 75 degree parking stall, which is the most efficient of a one way, of a one -way parking angle. For instance, if we were to utilize a 60 degree parking stall versus 75 on this particular piece of real estate, we would be losing two to three spaces per individual row. That doesn't sound like very much, but then you start doing the math, there's 10, row, there's 10 rows per floor, there's eight floors, and suddenly you realize that with that angle change um, in the same square footage of the building, we would be providing uh, 200 fewer spaces, maybe as many as 240. So, with that, so from that perspective, we want to keep our efficiency um, as best as we can in terms of provision of the spaces. So finally, in terms of industry standards, um, we, we find that in this area, um, the Urban Land Institute's Dimensions of Parking, fourth edition, um, seems to be the most appropriate for the average vehicle size that we have around here. And that's important to note in terms of the concept of average vehicle size. Um, similar to other buildings, you design around what your average vehicle is. Um, if, the, if our project was in California, we would be considering a smaller vehicle because the price of gasoline there drives a smaller vehicle used by most people. If this was a military installation or in a more rural area of the country, we'd be looking at a larger vehicle as our, as our standard vehicle. Mm -hmm. But a, a medium-sized vehicle um, is, is appropriate, and we found that the dimensions uh, you, um, listed out in the Urban Land Institute manual is really appropriate for this type of, uh, of application. Example of a medium-sized vehicle. Um, the vehicle I drive, a uh, Chevy Impala, um, is is a very good example of that. Um, you're going to see. We're going to show you a turning movement in a few minutes um, for a uh, for the uh, Ford Escape SUV, um, which which also is a similar example. Um, you know, um, one of the, uh, the the turning template that we provided staff earlier um, was that of a uh, Chevrolet Suburban. And are any SUVs considered, would, would they be included in the, in the uh, medium category? Any type of SUV? Certainly, the, small, the smaller SUVs, the smaller. Abs absolutely. Like uh, the, the Ford Escape, we're going to see the turning template of in a, in a little bit. Um, my, my wife's Sorento was probably uh, on, on the larger side of a current SUV that's on the market, but it gives you a flavor for okay, what's, what's available. So this is, uh, this is our typical parking level. Um, you can see that the one-way traffic pattern um, comes up right, right through that bay, and the driver basically circulates all the way around the outside and then keeps, keeps going up. And then for exiting traffic, um, the, the down cycle is, is the two plates that are in the middle. Um, um, actually, the one, one more down 
Um, but basically you come down and you can see that on the way out of the garage, the vehicle path, the vehicle travel path is a little bit less um, to, uh, to quicken an exit um, from the interior path. So if we could move on, um, this is you know, the, the, stall, the stall geometry and how things work on a parking angle. It's, fun, it's fundamental geometry. Um, you take your nine foot by 18 foot space, put it on an angle, and um, I was okay. about to say um, a high school sophomore could figure it out, but I'm closely related to a high school sophomore and her math skills are. But anyway, this, <laughs> this, is, this is where the fundamental parking stall dimensions come from in terms of uh, the, the basic layout. Um, and um, you know, on, on the short side, um, the math works out to a, a vehicle projection of about 17 feet, four inches, and on the long side, okay, it works I out. need to stop you for a second. <laughs> I, I too much. To, no, no, it's not that it's too much. I need to know how much of this information was presented to staff before today. Um, I think the latter, all this information pretty much got to staff by December 16th. I can't, I have I think, to go back and look at I think at it was the 13th. 13th. Of December? Yep. Yes. Okay. So what about so, on this side of the room? Let me, if, if I can just maybe yeah. clarify. I need to elaborate because I need to know oh, if this sure. makes a difference here. And, and yes. while I, could, I see some places where I've lived, um, I saw we had that, um, that, that kind of parking and it makes sense as long as you know, people's car doors aren't slamming into each one another. Um, but. And I don't know if this makes a difference in terms of the recommendation. So apparently it didn't make a difference in terms of your recommendation. And I can't speak to if all this information that has been presented up to this point was in the, the record um, of, because there were okay. nine or ten different additional information that okay. was provided. And um, in the short period of time, I, I can't quantify. Okay. All right, you wanted to say something, Mr. Gingles? Just two things. Okay. So. Um, at the uh, SDRC, um, information that we felt had been submitted was determined by Mr. Masog not to have been provided to him. We subsequently uh, met with staff uh, and provided that additional information. And we did have a conference call with um, Mr. Herbert and one other person, I believe, from transportation planning, but it, Mr. Masog wasn't available to have that conversation at that day. And so everything that we essentially are talking about, we just, it is provided to them. We're just putting it in our own presentation form. There is a, di I think the large, the main difference of opinion is, is that we believe in, uh, as his presentation is essentially to justify that the, the math essentially justifies in speed and operation safety will justify us utilizing a 17 foot 10 inch drive out. So the um, reason I'm asking is obviously the staff report has to come out um, at least two weeks in advance or some, and, and has to be posted and I'm looking at the recommendation which obviously for this portion of it says disapproval from the DDS 654. Um, I didn't know if, it, if the disapproval, because it says it was disapproval because of needed information was not provided at the time of this report. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to figure out whether this information came, sub came in subsequent. To if report. so, was it analyzed? And if so, did it make a difference to our, to our professional staff? It, it, it does. And the only thing I would do just to hasten well, no, it along no. is, is it's, no, we're, no. we're it down makes, to it a may make a difference to you. I was wondering yes. if, if it made a difference to our folks. It does. And, and it, but it did. It, 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 it does. It did. And did. Just, but because just I'm to, asking them and they're saying they haven't seen this. Well, I'll let them speak to that. What yes does that mean? No. I can state, uh, Tom May, Southern Transportation Planning Section, I didn't see any of this information till at least the week between Christmas and New Year's. Okay. I can't recall. What I'm trying date. to understand is does this presentation that is that we are receiving that we the board is receiving You're today, does out. that make a difference in terms of your recommendation? So you're saying you haven't seen it? I don't know. Okay. So you haven't analyzed it. I haven't analyzed it. I understand you haven't analyzed it, but I was trying to figure out whether you had seen it before. No. You had well, I not. You just said you saw it between I, 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 I saw it between Christmas and New Year's at the earliest. Okay, and then what happened? You just saw okay. it? 
So uh, I may. We discussed it, and there were still missing pieces. There were inconsistencies. Are there still in, 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 inconsistencies? In my mind, yes. Okay. Let's okay. hear. Uh, Madam Chair, Andre, Andre Checkley, uh, Planning Director. I think that uh, what staff is trying to point out is that the staff report went out on the 20th. Got it. So when we say we hadn't seen it. I knew that part. Okay. I said that. You hadn't seen it then. But, but, but in the interim, I'm trying to find out if you've seen it now. in the interim and did it make a difference in terms of the recommendation for today. I know it says disapproval back then because the staff report has to be published well in advance. Okay. But in the interim, what, what I was trying to find out, what, did it make a difference? Because we, ultimately the board has to make a decision, but we do rely on your expert mm -hmm. Um, opinion. We may agree or disagree, but we rely on it to, you know, it's part of our analysis and our decision making. So that's what I was trying to find out. What over there? Who had seen some segment of this? Okay. So to the point that there's that this information is meaningful. When I wrote my recommendation for Mr. Hurlbut, I did not have a number in mind. At this point, I believe that there is a number in mind that I could consider. Okay. When did you I do understand. I'm not passing judgment about the time people wrote this because I understand mm -hmm. it's one of the innate problems with our compressed statutory schedule. So, so um, when you don't have a lot of time to do the analysis, um, because the staff report has to be published by a certain time, then that presents some problems in terms of having the requisite information um, at, at the time. But, I, but what I was following up on was what happened in the interim. So you're saying, what I think I hear you saying, and you can feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, is that you still don't necessarily know completely, but you now, based on something, based on the information that you have now received, you have a number in mind. Is that what you're saying? That's correct. Okay. And what is that? I believe, based on other garages that I have seen, that an 18 foot 3 inch aisle width has at least some precedence in being used by other jurisdictions. Okay. All right. Okay. And then, but it might be helpful if for him to finish this, his presentation. Is that what you're Yes, it would. Okay, okay. Yeah, so just to clarify and to answer your question, the report was written without the additional information. I got it. We received that much it. we know. Yeah. We received the additional information, and it did not demonstrate that it would change the recommendation of the, of the report. But and that's where we are at this point. Different. That's yeah. different because when I checked over there before, they had said none of them had received this. Right. But you're saying, you're saying you received this. Okay, we're good. I just want to know where, where we're. I just want to hear the rest of this presentation. Go ahead. I, I just want to ask Mr. Mesa just one quick question on the number. So the, the 18-3, um, is that for two-way parking garages or one-way? One-way, sir. Okay, thank you. Okay. So I'm going to have Mr. Judge finish, but sure. I've asked him to sort of focus on um, Al, um, sort of justification of why Al proposal the 1710 would work. Okay. Since now that you know the other number that's being proposed. Okay. Hello. Hello. John Judge, returning to the microphone. Um, if we could go on to the next the, the next diagram. Thank you so much. Um, the uh, the the picture to the left um, is uh, our uh, our lay our proposed layout for the drive aisle geometry, um, utilizing um, the the stall widths based on the the information that we just presented and the 17 foot 10 inch drive aisle. Um, which is um, at the recommendation of, of ULI. And the 17 foot 10 inches is based on um, calculations of, uh, of turning radius that date back to the 1950s. Um, the diagram to the right, to the lower right, is uh, the geometry of uh, the, uh, the Ford Escape SUV. And the diagram to the upper left, a little more faded than I wish it were, but it shows how the, for, how the, uh, how the escape maneuvers um, in and out of the parking spaces um, utilizing the 17 foot 10 inch drive aisle. So if we could, uh, so the, the, the question is, is uh, well, it, well where, where have you done this before? Um, and it's, uh, it's this project here at Salisbury University, um, the Wayne Street Garage. Um, we started designing this facility in 2007. 
Um, it opened uh, to traffic for the 2009-2010 academic year. Um, the design of the facility um, was for 17-foot, um, 10-inch uh, wide drive aisles um, with, uh, with eight-foot wide parking stalls, um, eight, and eight feet six inches is the standard um, that the Maryland University system sort of compromises that. Well, what was it again, 18 what? They, they use eight foot six inch eight wide foot six by 18 long, to by 18 feet long. Um, we did not feel that that was an appropriate stall size for that, for this particular project. And that's why we advocated the departure to uh, nine feet uh, by 18 feet. I'm sorry, can we go back one slide, please? Sure. And okay, what, so the, the bottom right, so that SU, this is showing the 17 by 10. Is that, I'm, I'm looking at the bottom, yeah, I can hardly see it on our screen. Yeah, the, the, dimension, the dimensions in the lower right are the physical dimensions um, of the vehicle itself, um, the overall length, the overall width, and the, and the body height. Okay, but is that based on a 17 by 10 or? That's well, that's vehicle. that's that's the vehicle itself. This is this no, is. No, a, I understand, but I mean, the, oh, the, the turning movement. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, the turn the turning movement is based on the 17 foot 10 inch okay. wide drive aisle. Got it. Um, that's that's based on the geometry that you see to the left. Okay, thank you. Sure. Sure. So. Um, so the design of the of the Wayne Street um, garage in, in Salisbury, um, the uh, the design um, that uh, that was laid out, um, you did use uh, a 17 foot 10 inch wide uh, drive aisle as part of the design. Um, as I mentioned, it's been in service um, for a little more than 10 years. Um, we haven't received any complaints from the university about students having difficulty um, negotiating um, the stalls. Um, not to say that it hasn't been restriped. Not to say that. Uh, the, 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 you know, nothing is perfect. I'd say this is or isn't perfect, but if there are any complaints, they haven't been brought to our attention. And that's the end. Excuse me, Madam Chair, if I may. Uh, just to clear up the record, staff did receive some additional information on their request. This level, this PowerPoint, is the first t time we're seeing this. Okay, I, I surmised that much already. Yeah. Yeah. But what I was trying to understand was if there was some measure of information, analogous to this at least, that, that would warrant or, or might justify the change in this, in, uh, the reduction in size a change in the recommendation. Because all I could go on was the, the staff report, which I knew, mm -hmm. that's not blaming anybody, which I knew the information wasn't um, submitted at that time because of how long in advance the staff report has to be posted. But I wanted to know if there was something in the interim which proved helpful, and that's what I was trying to elicit. Well, it's, it's a little difficult at this point uh, we have a standard, there's a universal standard, and that's what we went with. And to, to uh, deviate from that, this is all very helpful, it's all very useful. I'm not sure if transportation staff can give you an opinion on the fly like this. Okay. Um, like I said, this level of detail we did not okay. have. Whether or not this makes a difference in staff, in transportation staff's opinion, I, we don't I, know, and yeah. we'll and we'll continue the rest of the, we'll continue with the the rest of it. But that's all I was trying to get. At. It's not to cast aspersions. It's trying to get, elicit a professional opinion. And did and did anything that that was submitted alter that professional recommendation? That's all, Mr. Gingles. Um. So, and I'm not really saying anything different than Ms. Checkley did. But, it, but you. But it's visual now. Yeah. Uh, so all all we did was take the information that we provided, mm -hmm. and we arranged it because Mr. Judge was going to come up here and speak, and we just arranged it in a manner to present mm -hmm. to you. Well, that might make sense. Right? Yeah, that information is in, and I would say that I felt that in the conference call that we did, that we walked through because we had several questions come from Mr. Herbert about justifying that. So we did walk through that. Um, but sometimes the picture's worth a thousand words Yeah, well, too. the pictures are in there. Okay. Uh, we, that okay. picture of Salisbury's okay. in there. Okay. Those dimensions are in there. It's just that we, we, 
just like when I come here, the discussions I might be having with staff when I come to present the case, I work on a presentation. I ask Mr. Judge just to put together a presentation to lay it out for you. He gives you his bona fides, uh, what he's worked on, and then the background and some background about why we think this works. So that's it. Uh, I, there are, and I, I guess I want to make sure, even though that's the item to which we had the most, it's the disapproval, and so we obviously spoke toward that. I don't know if there are other items, and I can spend time on a, a great deal more in the staff report, but I already went past that 20. <laughs> You're at 30. I'm at 30. So uh, please let me know if there is any particular item. I know that we, we prepared, for instance, a summary of the green building techniques, because sometimes that question comes okay. up that we would be normally utilizing. I can just pass that out to you as an exhibit. But if there's anything in particular in the staff report, if you want me to talk a little can bit I, more about the I buffering or anything. Was, was there anyone from the transportation division on the conference call? Yes. Hi, good afternoon, Brian Bernard Woods for Transportation Planning. I was on the call with Jeremy when we requested more information. Okay, so when he walked through this present, the data in this presentation. So we talked about what further information we would need to better evaluate their proposal, um, and they had talked about the past and how they've designed other garages that have these dimensions. Um, but we had requested to see those. The, the plans of, of those facilities. So this presentation is a result of your request or did you all discuss this, the content of this presentation on the call? We discussed that they have, they, they have built parking garages that have dimensions similar to what Can they're proposing here. Can you speak to what here. we just saw? Is this what was discussed on the conference call? Not in this deta detail, no. If I may, we were asked by Mr. Herbert, he gave me a specific date and he said, get me any additional information by that date, which is what we did. He has the date, I'm, his mind's better than mine on this. Yeah. So all we did, again, is for purposes of this presentation, I had Mr. Desmond organize how he was gonna present That's it before fine. the board. But all of this information is essentially in there. Okay, so you know what, sometimes, the, sometimes um, an exhibit like this is helpful. I don't know, but, uh, the one thing I, personally hate is when you pull into these parking spaces that somehow got approved, probably we approved them, and the cars are too close together. Mm -hmm. I can, I'm a native New Yorker, I'm used to t parking in very tight spaces, but I hate when I come back and find out that the person next to me is dinging my car, because mm -hmm. I don't ding anybody's car, okay? Mm -hmm. So, um, um, so I just want to make sure that, that this is an interesting proposal and it may work. Um, and, and one of the other questions, but I don't, but I'm looking to hear from, from our professional sure. staff, and that is why we went down this path of what you knew and, and, and did it change anything. What I also want to know is, I, so what I also may, or I'm gleaning from this, is that all the spaces are the same? Is, it, is there no that, compact? That's correct. Versus S. Um, that's correct. All the spaces are the same. Okay. And, and the, maybe the last point I would just say, so we, we spent well over a year going through this and looking at a lot of analysis of our other garages, how all of this working in circulation before, and then okay. brought Desmond in. The last thing, and I think this is what Mr. Peterson was trying to emphasize when he first came up is, is that the experience of coming, we need to make sure you get in, out, and access, and you have an enjoyable part of that. Uh, we're not going to undertake to spend these kind of dollars on the garage if we don't have great confidence in that mm -hmm. what we are doing is going to work. And understand it's, it's different. It is different than what's in the ordinance. Part of that That's is to, important. again, Partial. design to the grade that we had, decrease the footprint, make it more efficient. And we've done that every time we've done garages down there. I mean, we... We design them in a way to get in and out of them in, in a way. And I, while it is different, uh, we feel very comfortable enough that um, it's very operational. So how is my Tahoe going to work in that one of those spaces? Yeah. So you're, you're, you're like me. Every now and then, if I'm driving the FX45, I may look for a space that's on the corner. And you're going to be one of those guys that cheat. But I will say that. Yeah. 
<laughs> but it, it is, um, I want to sort of go back, and I know we're sort of moved to the spaces. The spaces are becoming, the space sizes are actually becoming, and ev even in your new ordinance, there is more allowance for the smaller spaces. We all have to get used to it. Mm -hmm. um, I have a garage at, at a house where I have to park in a certain way because I have to negotiate with the lady of the house about how much space she wants in the two-car garage for her movement out of the car versus That's how much smart I have. Man. Right. But, but spaces are getting smaller. Yeah. It is the aisle width yeah. and the ability to maneuver in and out of the aisle in an efficient manner that is largely at debate here. It is a difference of about five inches. What I'm looking at, at least from the diagram. I understand I'm that, but, but I, from the diagram, it appeared as if with the, with the size that's being proposed, that to get into it, you're going to have to go into the other lane. That's there's, what it, No, there's, well, so it's one way. But still. So as you're turning, you mean? Oh, you mean into the other yeah. parking space lane? Yeah, as you're turning yeah. in, it seems there. as if you have to go into the other so, lane. So, again, and I think one of the Mr. Oh, Judge's points was, is you look to an area of the region, and you sort of de you design based on the average. I mean, it's sort of you design so and take up a lot of additional space and make uh, a garage less functional to make sure every space can take in a suburban. No. He's designed to the average of it. And so based on this region, and he sort of explained some yeah. differences uh, about where you, how you might design based on that region and what the average car sizes okay. are rolling through there. Okay. So, and I know, I heard that, and that's why this is a medium, I heard, he said that. Okay, Mr. Judge said that. So my question is, is that typically, is that better now? Are we moving to that in that direction versus accommodating different size cars? Because um, Commissioner Washington's vehicle is not average. Mine's not average either. Yeah. Mine is. Okay. So <laughs> is. Okay. <laughs> okay. I have an escape. Well, so. I mean, I, I, I think I, if it, you it, just it, look at the Urban Land Institute's uh, parking guidelines as they've evolved over time, look at your uh -huh. own guidelines as they're evolving now in terms of everything from space sizes to how more often you allow the smaller spaces. So. so I'll ask it a different way. Will your other garages on site accommodate the Tahoe or other cars of different sizes? Or is this yeah. a standard space across all the other garages? So garages it, well? it will actually accommodate a, a Tahoe. Yeah, that's not now, whether question. or not you decide you want to yeah. park on an end yeah, so that yeah, you have that extra space. But so yes, let's, let's, let's assume you can't accommodate it. Let's Same assume way. you have a bigger car, you have a truck, so I've got like a big Ford and I'm driving through and I can't get into this particular garage. Could I go and park in one of the other garages at the casino? You could, but I just want to note, these are the same width as the other garages. But the angles. The so that's, I'm, the not, angles I'm not concerned about the parking size width at all yeah. in okay. this debate. Angles, I'm, yeah. I'm concerned more about the angle there, and the, the aisle width. There, right. are some, there are some garage spaces that are straight in 90 degree angles. Yes. Straight in 90. Yeah. Okay, and yes. that you actually could maneuver in then yes. with a bigger truck or something. Okay. And, and just to jump in, so uh, this graphic was one that was provided at the 35-day limit. We worked with the applicant to ask for additional information. That was provided. We analyzed that additional information and was lacking in specific details that were needed to clarify the point, such as the drive aisle dimensions and parking space dimensions of the sample garages. So thus, we, it wasn't demonstrated that this worked for the drive aisle dimension. Uh, change and to your point about can you park in other garages there are 75 required parking spaces for the hotel use in this garage so so are they the same the, the, in the hotel use that those parking spaces are similar to Maybe. these parking spaces in in width to, to, to the applicant's point, there are spaces in the corner of the garage that have wider drive aisles and are 90 degree parking um, but you would have to do, find those within the eight. But I mean, the level. 75 that you mentioned. They're, they're not designated specifically. It's just they would have to, it's just in terms of the site plan requirement, um, it's been de determined that based on the MXT parking ratio, they use the a hotel parking ratio, which we agree to, which says the requirement would be 75 spaces for the okay. 150 rooms. So my next question is, as, as, as um, 
Commissioner Geraldo mentioned, he was concerned about the ability to turn, um, and given that um, the, the drive aisle with uh, the proposed drive, and then he came up with a number of, of 18.3, is that what you said? Okay. And um, your, this drive aisle with is, is comparable with your other garages, you're saying? The one that we modeled after is 17.10, yes. That's one at Salisbury University? Yes. Okay. So just to, to sort of orient myself, I think the two debate points are 1710 versus 183, um, and the aisle, and that's the aisle width or the roadway, and then the angle of 60 degrees versus 75 degrees. You have 90 degrees elsewhere, so you have more more <laughs> options elsewhere on site. But it's really in this garage, it's 60 versus 75. It seems like our staff have a report by um, the Army I think Army Corps engineers or some an Army department that has different standards than um, the ULI. So I think that might be helpful if you can address like just differences in, in what we're looking at resource wise. Um, because if we go with our staff's references, you guys don't get those those angles and stuff. Um, but if we go with yours, then then it would be more conducive with it. So just sort of explaining why there's differences in the two manuals, I think might be helpful. Certainly. Um, and um, the, uh, the, the, re the referenced uh, manual, I believe, is uh, from the Army Transportation. Hmm. So it, 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 it's not necessarily um, exact. But anyway, um, the, uh, the manual being, being referenced is specific to um, on-base military operations. Um, Desmond right now is involved in designing a parking facility at uh, the Marine Corps base at Quantico. And we are using that military standard um, at uh, that particular installation. And the reason why that standard is different in terms of wider drive aisles is what I talked about at the very beginning of my presentation. They need to accommodate a much larger average vehicle. Um, the, 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 the size of the vehicles um, at, uh, that are traversing Quantico very much surprised me. So again, looking, you know, so what the, what the military is doing in terms of their standard is, is they're designing their, their parking operation for their typical vehicle, which by definition is much larger than what we see on the Beltway here. Um, one other thing that I'd like to, clear, to, uh, to clear up is, is that this is not, the, the layout is not necessarily going to force an owner of a suburban of our Tahoe to not park in the facility. Some drivers may need to make a three-point turn to get in out of the space as opposed to a one-point turn. Some drivers are going to naturally get aligned properly in the middle of the drive aisle because the angle is much easier to negotiate than a 90-degree angle where you have to swir swing to the left into oncoming traffic to pull back to the right to align yourself properly um, with the 90-degree uh, the parking stall. Um, other questions? I, uh, I'm trying to follow, but... If you parked at BWI. Yes. <laughs> and it's, how does that compare to the parking at BWI? I have lots of space when I park there, even though I can't find my car ever. Well, yes, you, yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, at, 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 at BWI, <laughs> um, they, they, um, they provide a very high degree of customer service um, to uh, their passengers which at $25 a day is the least they could do. They should. Right. <laughs> um, but um, but their, their parking standards is actually very similar to standards that uh, are, are used um, here in here in Prince County. Um, the facility that we designed for utilized a 9 by 18 parking stall and a 24-foot drive aisle. Um, so it's a 60-foot it's a bay, which was what we would typically be proposing if we were dealing with two-way traffic and 90-degree parking way. here. That's so, one way. And, and you're talking one way, and, right. and I inadvertently was focused earlier on the space versus the drive out, so um, a, as you surely gleaned. Okay. <laughs> um, so, you know, I'm, I feel comfortable. I could, I could do that drive out, but I don't know that it, you know, that's just me. And I will offer this piece of advice. When I go park at BWI, I take a picture of my parking space. Oh, right. <laughs> so I know where to go back and get my car. Started that. Okay. Um, if I may, the, the one additional thing, and I just I was able to discuss, have a little bit of discussion earlier with staff, but 
while we do think the 1710 drive mile works, uh, the applicant is prepared and we think it basically allows us to stay within the footprint and the efficiency to yes. move the aisle to 18 feet. Um, that was my next with, question. Um, right. which, would, mm -hmm. which, would, which would still make everything work um, as essentially designed. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. okay. Great. I, I, again, from staff's perspective, there hasn't been specific detail that demonstrates that this will function. Um, okay, but what you all staff has just seen, heard. can you please comment on it? Uh, again, what we just saw has no dimension. I'm asking transportation. It was only this week that I got the Salisbury lot as an example. Uh, the first thing I did was I checked the aerials and measured up the aerials. And I find, and if it was designed with 17 foot 10 inch aisles, apparently the university has uh, repainted the lot because they have slightly wider aisles, 18 feet 3 inches. And uh, but that's my question, 18.3 inches will work from your perspective? It would work from my perspective. If it's been approved and if they're satisfied with it at Salisbury, I'm willing to endorse it. Okay. So, you're sa so it may have been approved at 1710, but because of the striping now, you, it looks like it's 18.3. It, it, from the area. Everything measures out perfectly. They've got their, their 56 foot modules for the parking, but it looks like they stripe for slightly shorter spaces and a slightly wider drive aisle. And theirs is one way as well? Theirs is one way as well. Okay. So okay. just to, I, so I think we're splitting hairs, like extremely thin and short hairs. Um, the Army manual that you have in the staff report for a 75 degree angle, one way, says 20 foot, or says, that it could go on a 20-foot aisle way. Um, That's correct. So how, how are we getting down to like 18 or 18.3? And, and what's the difference between 18 versus 18.3? Like is it, at the end of the day, like if this doesn't work, it's not, I mean, it's your guys' fault. You're, you're designing and you're going to lose business and it's not going to work for you. So you're screwed. And you've either got to redesign spaces or you have to redesign the garage. So I'm, I'm an economist. I think of market forces, and it's just going to screw them on their profits. So I'm, I'm trying to think of why we are so <clears throat> hesitant and, and sort of biting in on five inches. Um, if it's going to create problems and traffic and concerns, it's fine. But they're willing to give up two inches to redesign this, perhaps. But is it really worth it for us to dig in our heels on an additional three inches? when it's really falling onto them at the end of the day if they can't get their product to work? Well, it sounds like a small difference. But in terms of maneuverability, every inch counts. With a narrower drive aisle, in order to use the space, the vehicle has to either encroach upon the opposite side in order to get in and out, or it has to encroach upon the neighboring parking spaces. Okay, it can do that by making three or four point turns, but then the justification of the applicant of trying to provide efficient parking gets lost in all of that. If everyone is sitting there trying to make three, four, and five point turns to get in and out of their parking spaces. So do you think the additional three inches makes any difference with that? I guess so. I mean, you're, I, I assume you'll say I, yes I because you want the 18 three for a reason. I feel it's sufficient because from what I can see on aerials, the university at Salisbury has apparently deemed it necessary to slightly restripe and widen the drive aisles. Okay. So and, did, are you all, aware, is that accurate from your perspective? The, uh, and I've discussed this with uh, Mr. Judge and we don't believe that that's what's occurred. And again, I, I guess there's a difference of opinions among consultants. Uh, we went and got the guy who's done a lot of these around the country and we feel very comfortable, even at 1710, but that, you, that, you're, that the majority of the folks are gonna be able to pull in directly in part because of the 75 degree angle without 
this back up and things. Again, Al. But, uh, but are you saying your information is that, that the, yes. the university has not changed, it still remains yes. 1710? Yes. Is that your information? We, we, yeah. have, we were made aware that. of that no. today. No. It got no. designed to 1710. Okay. We're unaware of any changes. Okay. Okay. Do you and, have video? And, and I would just, the last thing I would just say, I, um, you know, whether or not, and I, I, I'm not sure if their stalls are the same, Mr. Mason, their stall width, stall. They appear, they appear to be about the same. Yeah. So we, we don't know if that's um, a little bit less on the 18 feet out in terms of the striping because the, the way you measure it, that could have been picked up or be off anywhere. Again, we go through, when you design these things, you go through a number of um, kind of models that show the cars coming in and out. Uh, there's a lot of analysis that go in it. We don't come to this uh, just haphazardly. Um, and it is a significant investment, um, as have been all of the garages there. And, uh, again, because we are doing this to make sure we move people efficiently, uh, we feel very comfortable that we've done enough study to um, show that it works as proposed, but again, would be willing to add a couple of more inches, uh, and mainly because we still think that gives us the efficiencies that we're trying to uh, sort of come in the overall aspect of the garage to begin with. Do you have any videos showing, I think you had mentioned that earlier, of the actual in and out of cars? No. no, we we didn't present that. To, we didn't give them any of that information. Um, I know we spent a lot of time on this. Again, I'd sort of ask, was there anything else? And you you got to hear from some other folks. Was there anything else? That I'm interested in the green wall. Sure. Uh, so if you, for instance. Uh, okay, wait a minute. How many other people we need to hear from? I want, to, right. I want to know about the living wall as well. Okay, all right. Okay. <laughs> we saw one in Annapolis okay. not too long ago, and it looked amazing. So. You know what? Yeah, we, we uh, tried to explain to the Historic Preservation Commission that there were several issues with that. A lot of it's maintenance and you know, getting everything from birds or other things okay. growing up as you go along the wall. We did, uh, and subsequently your staff has proposed a revision which involves uh, doing additional planning on the Oxen Hill Manor property and down into that area. Um, but we, we started with, and the one reason staff asked us to put this together, that video was to show that there essentially was no visual impact from the various, from both the steps and from the patio. And we did do that in mid-November when the majority of those leaves were down. Okay, okay. All right, here's the deal. Have a seat. Yeah. Passing this case. Have any conversation you need to have. I promised our very hungry people we would break at one. That's not working. <laughs> but um, I am going to pass this case long enough to take nine and ten. Okay. Let's go. No, no. Um, it, if you, can, you should avail yourself of this opportunity to have discussions because if, if, if it's going to be, if it looks like it's going to be succinct, we will take you before lunch and I'll just get beat up. But, um, <laughs> but if, it's, if it starts going on, we're going to we're, we're gonna take it afterwards. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, did you, you need to? Yes, Mr. Madam Hunt. Chair, briefly, I uh, just wanted to take a moment to introduce Mr. Thomas Severs, who's a new addition to the subdivision and zoning section within the Development Review Division. Uh, Mr. Severs comes to us from Austin, Texas, where he was an environmental um, review specialist as well as a planner one. Um, Mr. Severs holds a bachelor's degree in urban and regional planning as well as two master's degrees, one in applied philosophy and ethics and another in sustainability studies, um, and all from this Texas State University. Um, everyone, please welcome Mr. Severs to Right. Welcome, Mr. Right, Severs. Um, good, to have, good to have you. Um, I, I apologize mm -hmm. to you and to Ms. Scudder for, um, um, cause that's not the way this was supposed to go, but it, it did. Um, so, if, so right now we have a waiver of request. Do you want to give your, your brief overview? Yes, ma'am. Okay, 9 and 10. 
Uh, good morning, Madam Chair and members of the Planning Board. Can you move the microphone closer? Thank of you. Of course. Okay. Uh, for the record, I'm Thomas Sievers with the Subdivision and Zoning Section. Item number nine is a request for a, a waiver of the rules of procedure, and item number 10 is a reconsideration request for preliminary plan of subdivision 4 05068 for the Commons at Addison Road. The preliminary plan was approved on February 9th, 2006, and the resolution was approved, uh, adopted by the Planning Board on March 23rd, 2006. So, um, for the waiver, I just want to make sure. Um, can can you get re recite the grounds, or, or do I need for um, um, Ms. Scudder to? Did you, do you have something yes. else? Yes. Okay. Uh, so condition 17B relates to the provision of limited access to Addison Road, okay. uh, which prohibits any left turn to and from the site. Okay. Uh, okay. Based on good cause and error in reaching the final decision. Okay. Good cause and okay a yes. mistake. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so yes, in in a later in a letter well, dated okay, go ahead. Yes, uh, December eighteenth, twenty nineteen. Tracy Scudder, representing the applicant, requested a waiver to the rules of procedure first, and if granted, a reconsideration of con condition seventeen B, uh, based on good cause and error in reaching the final decision. Okay, I'm gonna stop you right there because okay. I'm gonna have Miss Scudder come up here and 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 succinctly um, address the waiver and the request and the grounds. Please identify yourself for the record. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board and Good staff. Uh, for the record, my name is Tracy Scudder. Happy New Year to all of you. Um, I am here this morning regarding the waiver and reconsideration request that is before you. I represent Banneker Ventures and 6301 Central Avenue LLC, which is the applicant in this matter. Uh, Mr. Omar Kareem was present. I think he had to leave to go to another meeting. Um, but I would just like to start off by thanking staff, both Ms. Connor and Mr. Sievers, for the way they have worked with us, not only with regard to this particular request for reconsideration, but also the pending detailed site plan application, uh, DSP 06020021, the 03 revision, which I believe is currently scheduled to come back before this board for a hearing on the 23rd. I think that date may be moved because we are still working with staff on um, addressing um, uh, some comments that came out of SDRC, so we will be requesting a continuance. But as this board is aware, this request concerns the third revision to the DSP, and it involves one of the most important sites and intersections of this submarket. Over the last year, the applicant has met with county and state officials from SHA regarding the left-hand turn into the site and has represented that these agencies are now in agreement with the left-hand turn. Uh, we are in the process of reviewing historical files and records and hopefully um, if, if it is the will of this board to allow the applicant an opportunity to present testimony at a future hearing on how this request satisfies the legal standards for reconsideration, but we believe there is a substantial public interest and further that the board will be able to make a finding, the appropriate legal finding, um, to be able to, to approve the reconsideration okay, to so remove let me Condition ask you this, 17B. This, I'm looking at your letter. Um, we can get to the waiver of the rules, mm -hmm. but in order to um, entertain, in order to allow the reconsideration, you have to demonstrate, you know, the statutory um, um, requirements and in accordance with our rules of procedure, fraud, mistake, surprise, or inadvertence. I was looking for the language in here. The closest I see to it is the third, is the uh, second to last paragraph in your letter to, uh, um, that the subject condition was imposed in error. So yeah, and so we um, we believe that at the time that the preliminary plan was approved back in um, 2006, I believe it was that there was. Um, you know, first of all, this is going to be in the uh, public interest um, to reconsider this left-hand turn, but also that we believe that an error may have occurred because of the fact that at the time the preliminary plan was approved, there were several projects that were active at that time in the entitlement process that never came to fruition. So what the analysis that was done back then was based on, on development projects in the area that, that, were never, that never got built. Okay. And also, um, you know, it had to do with the, the, the basis for the left-hand turn, I, I believe, also had to do with 
proximity to the intersection there and um, the absence of a median. And so what we're saying now is that, you know, the, the county and the state never really evaluated what a median break would would do for the project. And so that's why we would like to come in at a subsequent hearing. Okay, so let me stop you for a second. First of all, let me see if there's a motion to um, to waive the rules to allow for the request. Is there a motion? So move. Is there a second? Second. Is there discussion? All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, the ayes have it. Um, the air following the waiver of the rules, it necessitates some sort of sneak preview um, into what the reconsideration will actually address um, in, in the actual request. If the request is granted, then it will be set in for a hearing. But you have to demonstrate or, or allege some form of good cause, which you're saying in the public interest, or um, in this particular case, a mistake, a fraud, mistake, surprise, inadvertence, or other good cause. So you're saying there was an error, but I don't hear much um, substance to back up the error, and I didn't hear from our, our staff in terms of, is, is, do you believe that there's some indication of error? Uh, for the record, Sherry Connor with the subdivision and zoning section. Um, the, staff, the, the applicant has put forth um, several um, grounds. Uh, grounds for error in this case, and um, we have reached out um, to the applicant uh, from since the time that their request was submitted and indicated that we needed more information to be submitted in order to consider the merits. Um, they are working on getting that together, but we do think um, that uh, some of their grounds uh, hold water for error in this case. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. Um, um, if we grant the request for reconsider reconsideration doesn't mean that the condition will be changed. It will be set in for a subsequent hearing. You will have the time to get the requisite information into our staff. They do believe, you just, I just heard, that they do believe that there are some, some grounds. Understood. Possibly. Yes. So therefore, I am the only person who can make the motion because I was the only one who was sitting on this board um, at the time that this was, was granted in February 2006. So I will make the motion to reconsider. Um, is there a second? I'll second it. Is there discussion? All in favor of the motion indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, the ayes have it. We will set this in for a later date. You need to be prepared with your substance though. Yes, okay. ma'am. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right. the attendances of being sick. <laughs> it's like you lose your appetite. I don't. <laughs> and then I, I rediscovered Boston yeah, Egg Beans. Do you like Boston Egg Beans? Yeah. I love them again. Yeah. Like as an adult. Yeah. <laughs> On the holidays. It was February 2006 and I left after that. I left in March. That's right. Tell us. Yeah. <laughs> It's in, the, it's in the resolution, my vote and everything. Okay. We managed to take care of another item, which apparently I should have called first, but anyway. Um, Mr. Hoba, you are smiling. Does that mean we have good news here? I, I, I believe so. Um, he, 
you're talking back, about we're back i should say we're back to uh, item five and six the um national harbor beltway parcel the detailed site plan and departure from um design standards okay in, in talking with the applicant in the transportation section i think we are amenable to the 18 foot driver okay okay, okay. excellent okay um okay we're good you all are good over there okay okay uh, anything else you need to where else do you need to go with this um you have other people to speak no we don't we oh you have other people no no i'm asking you initially no. you did no now we, you don't we're we're done we'll just respond post your we'll any other discussions we, we have a couple of modifications to the conditions okay and to adjust that Thank okay yes you. you said we have mod yes okay that's fine wanna, do you want to handle that now yes oh, okay okay So, Mr. Herbert, you have the. Yes, Madam Chair. Are you in? We're in an agreement with the modifications. Um, so, hold on a second. Wait, they're not shown on the. As as, well, on my copy, I have an edited version of the ed edits that I guess the applicant is okay. prepared to present. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's so, hear that. Uh, the first edit would be under A, is to. Um, do the approved, but where it says allow a standard 17 foot 10 inch parking drive aisle it's eight. to modify that to say 18 foot parking drive aisle, the okay. rest of it remains the same. Okay, so are we deleting the word standard then? Too? Standard and 17 okay. foot 10 inch. Got it. And adding 18 foot. Got it. Um, okay. And then I'll just have Mr. Herbert uh, comment oh, on no. these as we go through. So let me ask you this, because the, the, the um, depiction that we saw earlier um, that, Mr. that prepared by Mr. Judge, um, do we need to actually accept that into the record, as that would be a, a applicant's exhibit number one, right. and it is uh, so accepted. And so then, therefore, your, revised, your proposed revised conditions would be applicant's exhibit number two, and we'll accept that into the record as identified. Okay. Thank okay. You. Um, we asked for the deletion of one P. One P, okay. Yes. B one P. Yes. And, and staff has consulted with historic preservation staff, and we are in agreement with this, with the modified condition four that the applicants propose okay. to replace. Okay. And one P, you're okay with the deletion? As long as, as four. Yeah, four. In oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. And then condition four is essentially the substitution for right. the deletion of one P. Okay. okay. And then the applicant has discussed uh, the, with the staff the modification of the findings under six for the design features, which would add the language in green, but would be further modified by after the words DSP certification on the third line of the green modification to uh, delete the words uh, will require a corrective sheet to be subsequently added and change that to say may require an amendment of the DSP. May require an amendment of the DSP. Yeah. Okay. And with that, we would respectfully ask for the approval uh, with those additions. Excuse me, those uh, modifications. Madam Chair, this is Peter Goldsmith, Senior Counsel, for the record. Do we want the second paragraph of, of A to read instead 
approve departure from design standards DDS 654 for National Harbor Beltway parcel to allow standard 18 foot parking drive out with as the as the needed information was provided at the hearing. Right. Yeah, but we're taking out the word standard though. But um, as right. That's right. That's okay. And take right. Out the word not. Excuse me. Thank you. To allow 18 foot right. parking drive out, but then as the needed information. Um, was provided at the hearing. It's, thank you so much. Very thorough Into council the sitting thank up you. there. Very thorough. That's council why we have good, great there. attorneys. Okay. Thank you. I think he used to be on my side of the aisle for a while. Back. Okay. Was there anything else? Okay. Does the board have any other questions? Um, oh, no, Ms. Cavett. Did you wish to speak? I'm sorry. Okay. Ms. Cavett and Mr. Knuckles. Okay. Is, is it Knuckles? Okay, thank you. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the Commission, staff. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Sarah Cavett. I'm here representing the Indian Head Highway Area Action Council. We are in support in general uh, of this project. Uh, our main concerns always have been that Biddy Bloom Park not be negatively impacted in any way because we believe it is a community and county asset and park and planning asset. Number two, the trail impact and that will be addressed more uh, significantly by Mr. Knuckles. Um, one thing about the landscaping that we always have had a concern about ever since the inception is both on the National Harbor property and on parks property when they talk about landscaping and uh, doing um, that kind of thing. The landscaping dies and nobody replaces it. Mm -hmm. This is a consistent problem with the national property, the National Harbor property, particularly along those areas that have residential impacts. So the, I just wanted to bring that up so that they know that we have a problem with them replacing, replanting, and maintaining the landscaping that they have said and agreed to. Um, uh, that's about all. Uh, our other main concern always has been consistently the view from Oxen Hill Road and the manor and how it impacts it. As long as the renderings and the PowerPoints that we've seen today show that grading going down, there won't be a significant impact to Oxen Hill Road, which is where we have our main concern. That is the main road into a significant community that is probably 5,000 homes along the way, some of which are valued at a million plus. Mm -hmm. We like to maintain that view shed along Oxen Hill Road as much as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. okay. So that's um, my only comments. I thank you very much. Happy New Year, happy 2020. And since we're all talking about how long ago we have <laughs> been involved <laughs> with the National Harbor Project, I go back to Port America. Yeah. <laughs> we, saw, we, do, you we, know, do we do too. We do too. A lot of us do. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Cabot, Ms. Cabot. Okay. Ms. Cabot. Ms. Cabot. Ms. Cabot. Ms. Cabot. I have a question. Yes, the revised conditions um, eliminate the green wall. How do you feel about that? I d we are not uh, real supportive of eliminating the green wall. But we also understand the problems that it causes. And so we're kind of on the, the wall. sitting on the wall on that fence. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right, thank you. Okay. Um, okay, Mr. Knuckles. Can you raise the microphone a little bit too, please? Thank you. Hi, for the record, I'm William Knuckles. Um, most people call me Will, but um, William Knuckles, as far as, as for the record goes. I'm a resident of National Harbor, by the way. Love living there. It's been a great time, right? Been there um, uh, since the townhouse development on the top of the hill started. Um, and it's, it's 
from that perspective, both as an individual resident, as a citizen of the county, as an individual, I hope you always consider that, even for the folks that don't come representing groups, but also as the president of my owner owners association, sort of thinking this as in terms of the collective representation as well. I wanted to address a few things, largely which focus on the trail. Um, we've talked about this, some of you have mentioned it, things that are problems with the trail are offsite. I don't think that's irrelevant because I think that that failure to think about and actually stitch together all the pieces to make it effective, um, that precedent is really important here because it actually relates to the fact that we don't have a good track record and we've been trying to think about pedestrian and bike access after the fact and trying to go back and retrofit. Um, retrofit is always hard. I understand we have to do that for communities that were built in the 20s and the 50s and the 60s, but we shouldn't have to do that build it and then let's back into it like five years later sort of approach with development in the county now. We can do better, we can be smarter. Uh, one of the things that hasn't been talked about in the trail in terms of, well the trail goes right by it in order to have a facility that's gonna have this many cars in it plus the hotel, with hotels, we know this from living in the harbor, come not just people coming to the hotel but they come with taxis and they come with Uber and they come with Lyft and the, you know that sort of circular pattern where they're all trying to drive around in circles and trying to jockey to try and get people. It's a very disruptive area to be a pedestrian in because they're really not interested. They're either interested in going on vacation and getting to their destination if they're you know not residents they're actually just trying to get to the hotel or much worse than that, the people that are trying to actually get a buck, right? They're trying to actually get that next fare, and it's a race, right? And, and not paying attention to traffic laws, all that sort of stuff is very common. We're used to that in the harbor. But there it's much worse because we're really talking about the place, which is where when you come off of 295 and where will you come off of 495, that's going to be the bottleneck area. So any disruption to this area traffic-wise is going to be something that doesn't just affect that one spot. It's not going to affect just going to the casino or going to the outlets. It actually is going to affect um, our ability to get home because problems that happen there, um, and we've seen this with other weird things like construction delay and events, back up on the interstate in both directions and affect whole community's ability to get home. Um, so we have to be really mindful that it's not just a garage somewhere, it's a garage at a key transportation node for the overall National Harbor development but actually, if I want to be respectful to the residents that lived there far before National Harbor was built, it's really important. It's extra important for the people that are our neighbors just outside the fence line that are trying to get home because they already have a horrible wait. So anything that sort of like takes my commute, which I can get home, you know, in like a fourth the time, um, has it extrapolates for those folks. So we need to be mindful about as we talk about small design changes, right? And I wasn't going to talk about parking space because that's not really my passion. But as you're thinking about efficiency, <laughs> that was really mentioned at one point. If we make small mistakes on does it turn, does a one-point turn turn into a three-point turn or a four-point turn, or does somebody who doesn't park all the way into the parking space like they're supposed to pull in and then hangs out in the driveway and cause a bottleneck, this isn't just an inconvenience in the garage. This is actually affects the whole transportation network that is actually working you know, pretty smoothly at the moment at that interchange and, and can really make a mess of that. So I don't know if there's a way to put in mitigation measures for, because we're really talking about, we're not talking about hard structures, you're talking about how far away is the paint, right? So if you have some ability to say, if this doesn't work, I understand trying to be smaller footprint, I'm an environmentalist, believe in all that stuff, right? That's great. But if it doesn't work, to have some ability to say, you gotta go back and fix this. You actually have to go back to the design standard that the county originally recommended and what's used all over the place to say, if your innovative idea is wonderful, maybe we can paste it all over the county. If your innovative idea fails, you have to fix it. You can't just go, it's a free market thing and people won't just say, I won't park there because that's not fair to the people that are just trying to come home from work, trying to get their kids from school, just trying to get back to their neighborhood. So the free market example I don't think is appropriate because you're not talking about people being impacted inside the garage, you're talking about the whole area getting impacted. So I hope you can think big picture about this and basically put in some contingency clauses for if you're going to go away from design standards to say, if it doesn't work, go back to the design standard later, right? Because you're not talking about like building a bigger building, you're just talking about it's going to impact numbers of parking spaces, which hasn't really actually been discussed in terms of why exactly we need these number of spaces. I do know at the harbor we need more. Um, that also relates to the pedestrian piece that goes to the trail. So if you're going to assume that people have to come and go from the garage and you, and you fill the garage, which you'd hope to do at least once a day, you round off, that's roughly 5,000-ish like crossings of the trail, right? That don't happen now. The only people that cross the trail currently are the park police. So that's a large number plus the hotel impact, plus the drivers and Uber and Lyft that I was talking about, there is no attention to how in the world is that going to be mitigated. I really appreciate the pedestrian bridge crossing concept because we've been talking about that for a few years, about how dangerous it is and how, you know, I have more on several occasions almost hit 
families, children, all sorts of people like dashing across, you know, trying to get across those busy roads. So the bridge is one thing, but they have to address the linear aspect mm -hmm. of crossing the trail, and that's not in here at all. Um, similarly to that, the next road down, as you're coming out of the harbor and you would take a right to go to these properties, um, if you're going to say, which National Harbor's right, they did do a good job, they improved the pedestrian access to the trail that goes down to the waterfront, almost nobody knows about it because there's no signage to speak of there, but for the people that could get directed that way, then they then have to cross that road crossing too. Um, and if you figure that there's not currently that I know of a shortage of parking in the MGM, so this garage would feed people going to events in the harbor, which is actually needed because we run out of space, or at least it backs up and it's not very efficient at the moment, so more parking is a laudable goal. But then you're talking about if people kind of like leave their car and then come back, then again, that's 5,000 crossings of pedestrians across that existing road, which right now just has some stripes on the road. And knowing as a person who both uses the trail and drives through that, that is just largely ignored. Um, we haven't done a good job in terms of having things where like you could push the button, because like it has been brought up before. We've done half solutions before to where like um, currently at the top of the Tanger Outlets, you can cross over to an island where you then get marooned mm -hmm. and families are just now <laughs> stuck. They're actually sort of misled into the fact that it's safe because like I can push the pedestrian walk button, but I can only get halfway there. Mm -hmm. So I really encourage to actually have some serious follow up to this that relates to if we're going to do this, we can't just go, I hope somebody comes up with a pedestrian and bike plan later and then it works out because it's not working out now. And it's not working out now when we don't have anything like the numbers of people that will be using this as a parking facility in the future. Um, there's a nexus to another thing that relates to the, the trail aspect that I want to talk to. And if the parks people were here, I know they would be advocating for it. It's not just like it's a nice place to walk. It has connections to trying to address the, county, the county's obesity problem. There's a health and welfare aspect of this. Right? There's lots of agencies that are relying on heavy usage of the trail and even greater than what it is now. And if you go there in the summertime on a nice day, it's used really heavily by residents who already don't have a way to get there. Um, I bring up that don't way to get there part is I noticed that there's a lack in the document of an analysis of the impact of the DSP um, as it relates to both things, the hotel and the parking garage, as it relates to potential impacts to 2008 Recreation Facilities Agreement. Now that agreement was the one where they said, hey, you know, the county's going to give up and say you can have a stormwater pond in relation for that, you're going to give us some stuff back to sort of compensate the public for your use of now getting, you know, a pond, um, which they needed to have the development. So that's supposed to relate to free. Uh, 50 free public parking spaces, a fishing pier, and bathrooms, and that sort of stuff. Well, if we're talking about parking, it would be lovely if they could actually say, we'll finally have a solution to that, and if a portion of this couple thousand parking spaces could be the 50 pu public parking spaces that's been pu promised to the public for over a decade, that would be a great head start. My only at, at comment that goes in relation to that is that if you're going to do that, let's look at the design standards and say, for not the typical however you profile a National Harbor visitor user to be, for somebody, because there's handicap access is specifically written into the agreement as well. Handicap access so you can get down to the waterfront and you can actually enjoy the outdoor environment, right? So would the design standard deviations be compatible or incompatible with that aspect of having the public try and access the trail? I don't know the answer to that, but I know it's not actually contemplated in the report from the staff report's point of view that I've looked at. So it'd be nice to say, like, can we get those parking spaces? And, um, and if we can, can we actually have them be sized right to meet that aspect of the agreement? The other aspect that staff has sort of mentioned to me, that's like, oh, it's not looked at because it's not actually part of the agreement. That was going to be done at a parcel down by the water. Well, the parcel they're talking about down by the water has been planned as a public safety office. It's been promised to the park police, it's been, which are now going to be displaced because of this building, right? It's going to be physically the park police, the park police offices, the park police vehicle locations, the county police, the county marines operations and the county special operations divisions have all been promised the same footprint. And this is also theoretically where the space would be that the free public parking could go, right? It doesn't all fit. But maybe one solution to this, again, is why I'm saying like not just, oh, just, just opportunistically grab some of these parking spaces out of this parking garage, but to say maybe this is a solution for the fact that due to effect, ineffective communication across the different departments in the county, not everything is going to fit at the waterfront not all the police functions, not all the storage functions, and certainly not the public assets functions can fit there. Maybe this would be one small way of addressing the first of the things on that agreement. We can get around to the thing about the fishing pier and the other stuff later, but we're talking parking, right? Let, let's try and get there. 
Um, and the last thing about the vegetation piece that you've talked about, um, the greening idea, Peterson does a great job of trying to do innovative things in terms of um, the greenery. It doesn't always work. They're trying to replant and do some failures. So I would ask for both some tolerance um, to the fact that we innovative things may have to be replanted several years in a row and it may not look as how you wanted to in the design diagrams immediately. But to also say that it's a laudable goal. Don't give up on the goal just because there's been some failures. Um, just to say we still want to put in the requirement, but to say we'll understand the fact that it may take a few years to work out the bugs because they're trying to do something better and something different, um, but to not give up on it. And thank you. Thank you. Other <laughs> questions of Mr. Knuckles? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Was there anyone else who wished to speak? Mr. Gingles. Um, as you um, prepare to close, um, uh, you've been working um, with National Arbor for a long time, for, for decades now, and um, one of the th you've been working with the Indian Head Highway Area Action Council um, for a long time. And um, so the plantings, are, is there something you can do about the plantings? I mean, uh, Ms. Cabot has indicated that she's addressed that with you. Um, I'd like to know more about the par parking spaces promised to the public. And then if you could elaborate ever so briefly regarding the status of the public safety building, which I know um, is underway and there is space for the park police and for uh, public safety and a community room and restrooms. We've all been um, participants on the design and as last I checked it did fit so I just want to make sure. Uh, I, I heard Mr. Knuckles um, and I wanted to make sure that um, that you can address that a little bit. Sure. Um, so Mr. Uh, Piranha and Mr. Peterson here obviously heard the comments about the landscaping and mm -hmm. they oversee that and I'm sure that will be something that will be having discussions with with um, Mr. Digby who does regularly tour the property. Look, we do a lot of replacement. Uh, one of the things we had to replace the most in the beginning was the fence that went along the back mm -hmm. property mm -hmm. at Gaylord because of so many and that was constantly replaced. So we do do great tours and we we feel like we keep up pretty well, but if we're missing some spots, it was good to hear that. Mrs. Cavett uh, actually is an individual. Mrs. Cavett and I share numbers. She lets me know, and I make sure that she has the <laughs> correct person to know. I'm and sure then if that person is not responding, she lets I'm me sure know again. Knows. So, um, uh, and it's very helpful. She okay. is one of the folks that keeps us on our P's and Q's down there. And so we're always interested no to know if we're falling short in some things. <laughs> Just a couple of corrections. So we do have a recreation facilities agreement. I have Ms. Hassan here listening to me. So if I get something wrong, she's going to correct me on that. So the recreational facilities agreement does provide for 50 parking spaces. The actual desire has always been to have that very close to the waterfront. So on the other side of the what I would call the spaghetti interchange. Um, there is a 1.8 acre parcel that we have the deed that is prepared to uh, go to MNC PPC. I, I think the majority of the delay over time has been largely because some of the things that have been thought about being constructed on that parcel, and this includes when it was just going to be purely recreational stuff, because of the variances that are that variances that are in place. Uh, personable to the applicant in the sense that we got those and because you are a public agency and cannot get those same variances there's been discussion over time about do you want to design it have us build it turn it over to you lease etc but that 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 area is there ready to be deeded to them my understanding from the last conversation I had with Donna Calcote is that they're reviewing some final declarations and or obligations that are on the property, you're using outside counsel to review those and at some point they're going to get back to us, tell us what they agree with, whether or not we need to still change something. Uh, but the deed has been signed twice by Mr. Peterson, ready to convey. The 50 parking spaces are to be located down there. There is a public safety building for which we are providing additional funding, which is supposed to house in addition to county police, some space for fire, some space for park and planning police. Uh, there is a design that Parks has put forward for a community uh, room that's down there. Where it is, I do not know, but the obligation that Peterson did is to contribute a significant seven-figure amount plus design money. 
And so we, we're, we're sort of out of it at that point, but we, there's one thing they have to do, and once they do that, we give them the design money, and then once they get the permits, we give them the seven-figure uh, uh, contribution. Um, with regard to the waterfront parking, we still have ample parking on the waterfront. We are able to um, handle most of the events that do come. Ultimately, we do have a lot of folks that are coming in from the district, from Prince George's County, that like to take that circular route and come back up at that sort of spaghetti interchange, and from Virginia. And so particularly as we believe over time, MGM will have more events. We will build additional uh, density, hotels, et cetera, on the Beltway parcel. We wanted to locate a garage that works best for taking those folks off the interstate as quickly as possible. As Mr. Peterson sort of noted in the beginning, those are left-hand turns, we, excuse me, right-hand turns in so that we can sort of move through traffic. We have the, the two entrances are put at the different grades so that we can move the traffic in there quickly. Um, so we don't envision ourselves having, yes, every now and then there are events. When we have multiple events, there will, this garage will be helpful for those folks that are coming in. As the need uh, sort of creates for itself, we'll run our shuttles that already operate in different kinds of modes and move people over from there. But we do think long term, the siting of this garage at that location, while initially it's mostly uh, handling different things that will be happening on the Beltway, ultimately, and then as things build up over time, will be very beneficial and allow people to utilize both Beltway and the waterfront parcel. Um, I would, the last thing I would sort of note is that when we look at uh, where the trail is and different things that occur moving up and down the avenue, when you cite these types of facilities, because that is um, within the authority of SHA, we have to make sure that we go through an analysis with them about where those interests are going to be, where uh, the pedestrians will travel. They actually had input as well into uh, the appropriate kinds of locations for the, the crossing uh, that's over. We think the crossing is going to be very helpful. The trail itself is on the west side coming down, and so mm -hmm. while you do hit that one stop sign where you want to cross and then go under all the way to the culvert, and I walked it recently. I did two nights down there just to sort of check it out. So there are different times of the day where it's very, very busy. We have uh, probably looked at three or four different design. I've either gone in with bowlers, with stop signs. We have a monthly meeting. We come back, we get information on how it's operating. What can you do to improve, particularly that point and other points where we know that there's a lot of pedestrian things. So this is something that's constantly looked at uh, by the Peterson companies, constantly looking to be improved. We have a lot of folks that come onto the property to utilize the trail. We want it to be just as safe for them as well as for the folks who are living there and utilizing the trail. So uh, that, that trail and that use uh, and the safety of it is constantly done. We've done things to slow down the traffic there. We'll continue to look at it. Uh, it's something that stays on our radar. Um, I think I've tried to hit, uh, the last thing I'll just sort of note, um, and I have uh, Mr. Um, first of all, there's an analysis in your staff report. But I have Mr. Linhart here who did a number of the counts to make sure that we were still falling within all of the peak hour trip and the capacity issues uh, associated with our preliminary plan and subdivision uh, and with any additional development as we move forward. Uh, at times at different DSPs, you look at it. It's, it's not density in the sense that it generates traffic for itself, but there's still, we still have looked at it based on some of the prior approvals for density and intensity on the property to make sure that we stay within those numbers. Um, if I missed anything that you need me to address, I'd go back to it. Um, I would just mention last, because I know you've still been having questions about the wall. We do think that uh, we're very concerned about what might be some of the maintenance uh, issues and operational issues with that. We think if they, if, and we did the test specifically at the request of staff to, mm -hmm. to get some comfort level that we weren't creating that. Uh, I didn't have my architect come up, but we think we designed a very beautiful building. We, we like what we've designed, um, even on that side. We still think we like what we've designed. We obviously put 
is much more um, focused on the most visualized aspects of it. But we believe what we've discussed uh, with your staff in terms of plantings, and let me just sort of note, we actually put together an exhibit where we went out, looked at the area, decided where the most advantageous uh, uh, placement was for all of that landscaping to make sure while we were comfortable that it would not uh, have the impact to make sure that it did um, negate any potential impact. Your staff came back and noted to us where they thought additional plantings could be further into the existing buffer uh, with some other treatments. And uh, after some discussions with them, we agreed to increase the amount uh, for them to do those in addition to what we had suggested be done. With that, um, Madam Chairman, thank you again. I, again, if there's any other questions that I have not responded to, I have folks here to do not that. Not a question. I have an observation sure. whether or not uh, the Peterson Company is having any input with the managed lanes that uh, the state is proposing, and they're going to stop the they're, they're going to stop the toll lane. They're going to stop the widening at Branch Avenue as opposed to continuing it all the way to a Woodrow Wilson Bridge. It's all I can say is that I'm aware of John Peterson. All I'm, I can say is I'm aware of the process that's happening. Um, and I, I know that yesterday um, the, the first phase of that did get approved. And what exactly happens on let's call it this side of the beltway, I think is, is up, for, uh, up for further consideration and design. Yeah, because we've been, well, that's one of the arguments that we've been having with the state, why a number of them, but one of them is they're just arbitrarily stopping at uh, Branch Avenue. Okay, I'm about to be continued. To be continued, okay. <laughs> can do that discussion later, thank you. Can I just ask Mr. Gingles one quick thing? Can I, can I ask just one quick yeah. clarification? On, on the trail access and the safety, is it possible where the trail crosses over, um, so I'll use sort of from the trail user's perspective, where the trail crosses over the driveways, not the driveways crossing over the trail, um, because I think of myself as being on the trail. Can you put paving that would either be reflective or increase visibility or maybe some sort of a lighting that would light up as people get to that trail? especially at night, so that way it would be more visible for cars to see people coming in mm -hmm. or coming over the trail? We can look at both of those options, absolutely. Okay, great, thank you. Um, and again, uh, the, we've been fortunate, I don't know if this is real wood. No, I won't, in fact, I won't even say it, I'll jinx it. He, leave it alone. He decided to stifle. Yes. Okay, okay. Um, you minutes. are, you are. Okay, nothing else? Okay, does the board have any other questions? We are ready for a motion. Madam Chair, I move that we adopt the findings of staff in addition to the modified uh, finding number six as outlined in applicant exhibit number two. And I will uh, read for the record uh, a further update to finding number six. Uh, and I quote, during the final design and construction, the total number of parking spaces may change but not exceed 2,500, period. Any changes to the number of spaces and locations per level after DSP certification, strike everything after that and insert may require an amendment of the DSP. In addition, I would further offer for the record uh, finding information um, uh, that will uh, support uh, support an upcome or, or continuance of this motion. Um, and that is in light of expert hearing testimony and information presented by the applicant, the planning board found that an 18 foot drive aisle will function safely in accordance with requirements of the zoning or um, ordinance. Uh, and with that, uh, move approval of design DDS-654 uh, for National Harbor Beltway parcel to allow a standard non-parallel parking space size of nine feet in width by 18 feet in length. In addition to approving uh, DDS-654 DDS for National Harbor uh, Beltway parcel to allow uh, 18 foot inch or 18 inch parking drive aisle. 18 inch. Uh, 18 foot, I'm so sorry, 18 foot 
boy, parking spaces. Uh, 18 foot parking drive uh, with, pursuant to information um, provided at the time of hearing. In addition to approving DSP 07073 one two and TCP 2 023 dash zero one dash zero four along with the associated conditions as outlined in staff's report and as further modified by applicant exhibit number two. Second. Second. So we have a motion and and, and what three seconds. Okay. Okay. Um, is there any discussion? I think it's been had. All in favor of the motion indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Um, so pursuant to um, um, the general provisions article of the annotated code of Maryland, specifically section 3-305B12, we need a motion to go into closed session for purposes of a personnel matter. So move. Second. We have a motion and, and a thank second. You all. <laughs> I'm all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Okay, so thank not going to take long. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, Marie, do real quick. <laughs> Two minutes. <laughs> Okay, they're on the They're on the We need a motion to come out of closed session. So move. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. We need a motion to ratify the action taken in closed session. So move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Mr. Hunt, any additional business to come before planning board today? <laughs> planning board adjourned. Thank you. Happy New Year. <laughs>